Thank you. Those who are still outside, please come inside. Auntie, I don't know the house, I've got just the window down the and I said, People will be running, running as I'm coming down the and I said, Chipping. And then I pick up a phone and they call me back. Number no written out. I pick up a phone and they call me back. Number no written out. I pick up a phone and they call me back. Number no written out. I pick up a phone and they call me back. Number no written out. But I saw you too. Could it be? Could it be? Could it be? Could it be? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome. So, We are finally at the beginning of this great event. Finally, finally. And we thank you all for your patience. Thank you. So, um, we were supposed to, to have begun. So we are going to be um, quite snappy with the program. And before we actually start, we would um, like to have a word of prayer. We are going to have two words of prayer. And we will start with a lady who would give us this word of prayer. And I'll be handing her the microphone.
Greetings, everyone, and you're all welcome. No need for speech now because our honorable distinguished officer. Let us bow our heads to give God all the glory. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for our lives. We want to thank you for bringing us here from far and near. I want to thank you for all those who are still on their way coming here. Land of German I want to thank you for our beloved family back home in the suppression. From the heart of perseverance. Tonight, the theme of prayer will be that of listening and hearing. For if we listen and hear from our hearts and spirits, we'll be able to understand the language that we are speaking. To see where we have to focus our energy. Our thoughts. Give us that spirit of listening and hearing us so as to understand where we have to focus on to resolve the issue that is striving and killing our nations, both in God and in home. Help God, help us to be able to listen to our comrade honorable leader here tonight, to be able to understand his vision. Help us to be able to carry this message and try to digest it and participate in it wholeheartedly so that we see where we've gone wrong and we understand where we are moving to. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, everyone. For listening to our prayer, we we'll ask the two Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Um, as I said before, we will listen to a prayer from a lady and we will listen to a prayer from a gentleman. So we'll be having our second prayer. Ferdinand. While we wait for Ferdinand to come, let's meditate on the prayer we just heard. Those were powerful words. Listen. Let's be able to listen, hear, understand understand the vision only when you understand that vision will you be able to follow implement execute so let's meditate on that while we wait for Ferdinand to come and give us his own prayer Just keep on meditating on the words you've just heard. Listen, hear, understand, and be able to follow the vision. Okay. We are not um, um, able to have our prayer from our gentleman, but we will come back to it definitely. Okay, so before we get into the program proper, we would like to sing our Amber Anthem. That is our ID. Um, this time we need a gentleman to tune this anthem for us. And I'm going to <laughs> give the phone to the person who is going to tune the anthem. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, 
let us stand. All right? Put your hand, your right hand on the left chest. <clears throat> And let us uh, sing the Ambazonian national anthem. So. Hail, hail, hail this land of glory. We the Ambazonians pledge our loyalty. Praise the Son of Savior who granted us the freedom. Allegiance to the heroes who bore the land with their blood. Glory to glory, we rise and never to fall. Hearing a nation flowing with milk and honey. Glory, glory, glory to the Father for making you a nation a joy forevermore. Ambazonia, land of freedom, you shall live in plenty, meeting our needs. And your children shall be like the stars above. The Most High God be the watchman of this nation. Ambazonia, land of freedom, you shall live in plenty, meeting our needs. And your children shall be like the stars above. The Most High God be the watchman of this nation. When injustice becomes law, becomes resistance becomes a duty. Right. Thank you so much for that brilliant anthem. Um, we will be going back to our prayer, because we cannot miss that prayer. And the gentleman who is going to give that prayer to us is no other person but Ferdinand. Ferdy, the mic is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome to this historic occasion. Let us pray. Let us call on the Most High One, the Creator of the universe, no matter by which name that we identify Him, we acknowledge His existence or her existence. We are here on this special occasion to reflect on our journey, to reflect on how long we have gone ahead and how long we may still have to go. Here with us, we are praying and asking and requesting on the Creator to open our ears and our hearts. Let Him open our ears and our hearts so that we can listen. Because it is only when we listen that we can understand. And with that power of understanding, we are going to be able to take that action that is necessary to liberate our nation. On this special occasion that we have our great brother, our father, who is with us, who has a clear vision of our liberation. We are asking God to open our eyes, open our hearts, so that we can have an understanding of that vision. So that through our actions, we are going to fall in line. We are going to be in an alignment with the action that we, we need to liberate our homeland. So at this moment, we reflect 
on our brothers, our sisters, our children who have shed their blood for many years because of the fight for truth and justice. As we invoke their spirits, we ask that let us revitalize our energy. Let us understand that we are on a course of no return and that we are going to achieve our, our goal, which is the liberation of our modern land. God, we thank you for listening to our prayer. Amen. Amen. Wow. Thank you so very much, Fedi. Hmm. Okay. Those were powerful prayers. Really powerful prayers. Um, those of you watching us on Zoom, um, let me apologize at this point that, I don't know if it should be an apology, but information that you will be having just the host view. You will be having just the host view. So you just bear with us. Um, back to our prayer. Um, if you're out there and you don't have a prayer and you're expecting God or our God to react immediately, please have some patience. They are all here today. We just heard the prayers. Our gods are all here with us today. So they may not um, attend to you as fast as you would like. Um, he may not attend to you as fast as you would like that to happen. So um, thank you, Ferdinand. Thank you, Celestine, for those powerful prayers. Um, so we are coming into the program proper. And for us to get there, I will give a short introduction of the Southern Cameroons community, Germany. This is an uh, umbrella community-based association consisting of several Southern Cameroons and Bazunian organizations, um, regional organizations, um, and of course, individuals. So this association came about after the German community went through a turbulent time, uh, a phase that either was to make or mar the German community. But as you can see today, it has made the German community. You are here to testify that. And personally, I think it was necessary for Germany to go through this phase because without that, Germany would not have been what it is today. This phase has made the journey you see today. And of course, this can only be made by powerful men and women who are strong, who are committed, who have a powerful leadership. We are so thankful for that leadership that we have in Germany. We are not only thankful for that leadership, we are thankful for the driver of the German train. We are thankful for the chairperson of the German community. We are so proud of him, having goosebumps saying that. At this point, I would like to ask Dr. Njibama, our chairman of the Southern Cameroons community, Germany, to come to the stage. Chairman, thank you. This is our powerful chairman. As you see the German community strong, know that this is the driver of that tree. Chairman, you're very welcome. Thank you, Madam Eleanor. Thank you for the great introduction. Hello, Stuttgart. Greetings to all in the webinar, dear Southern Cameroonians in Ground Zero, Ground One, Ground Two, dear Southern Cameroonian prisoners of conscience, all Southern Cameroonian refugees across the group, and all who are present here in the room. 
Welcome to this great event in Stuttgart. Uh, before I go, I would like to thank uh, the entire SEA Germany team, the various working groups that have worked tirelessly day and night to make this event a success. Not to forget, it's our technical team still on duty coordinating this event. We really appreciate your contributions to making this event possible. Ladies and gentlemen, some people are wondering what SEA Germany is, who SEA Germany is. As Madam Eleanor already said, the Southern Cameroons Association Germany, abbreviated SCA Germany, is an umbrella organization of Southern Cameroonians in Germany. And Southern Cameroons Association evolved from the Southern Cameroons Community Germany, which was abbreviated SCCG in 2020, after internal reorganization to focus on the plight of the people of Southern Cameroons and Bazonia. The main objective of Southern Cameroons Association Germany is to bring Southern Cameroonians in Germany together for the sake of the Ambazonian liberation. That is why we are here today to understand Honorable Weaver's vision for the liberation of the Samaroon Cameroons. Recording in progress. In Our German community has followed with keen interest the developments in our struggle in the past few years. And we came to the conclusion that we cannot continue the same path that would lead us to a failed revolution. We decided to reorganize ourselves to focus only on the people of Southern Cameroons. After intensive consultations with Honorable Weaver, who is here and who has been active, who has not been active in the public for quite some time, we decided to offer him this platform today to enable him to explain his vision of freedom for Ambazonian young people. We expect that this is going to help us turn a new page in the way we prosecute our liberation struggle. He is here today, as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, we did not promise too much that we cannot deliver. I hope that by the end of this day, we shall be inspired with new hope, energy, and stamina to refocus our energy to fight the common enemy and liberate homeland. Our citizens are scattered all over the world. Some are drowning in the Mediterranean Sea, trying to escape to Europe. We all have the obligation to bring this war to an end so that Ambazonian children can return home. Our complete existence is in danger and we must come together as a people, unite our forces like a bundle of room to sweep the enemy out of homeland. We are grateful that Honorable Weaver is finally here and that you all, including those at home in Ambazonia and those watching us remotely, have shown so much interest in understanding his vision for Ambazonia freedom. In case you need special help while participating at this event, please don't hesitate to contact me or any member of uh, our association, Southern Cameroons Association Germany. 
Uh, long live the Federal Republic of Ambazonia. Short live the Ambazonian Liberation War. Thank you very much and welcome to Stuttgart. Thank you so much, Chairman. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I told you that we have a powerful Chairman. You just saw that. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you so much. Um, do we have Willie? I'm looking for Willie. Ah, Willie. I need to say something about Willie. Willie is the son of the sword. Who saw the suffering of our people? He saw the suffering of our people. Willie, maybe you start making your way up to me, please. He saw the suffering of our people. And he swore, he swore that he will not sit and watch his people suffer. He cried. He did a lot. Really wept. You all know Willie. That's not all he did. He came up with a song to console his people. He has been singing. He sings. He came up with a particular song to console his people, to tell them that. What did he say, Willie? One day, what will he, hear what prayer? he said it. Willie is here today to remind us of that his promise. Willie, thank you so very much for coming and to assure our people that better days are coming. Let's listen to Willie de Paris. DJ, very first. The matter I say, we don't have a bend ground here, eh? I know people can't join us in our meeting. We don't have a church with any man to be shy. No, 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 no. We need that everybody should bring his energy here and let things go better. Hello? I don't know if you don't listen around that. Because anyone who can say, anyone who can say diplomacy, anyone who can talk big English, all this stuff, they might bring the thing right down. You understand? I <laughs> bring it right down. Because I'm lucky to be the crossroads. Now, when I'm going to go to the like an ID Porsche. Truly, my name is Willie Depari. I'm called Tanjo Willie Mofo. I'm a Bangwa son. My mother is from Banga Bakundu. So I'm a hundred percent Abazonia. Maybe some of you are even ashamed. <laughs> you know, some people are ashamed to say to people, I'm, a, I'm from Abazonia. Some people are afraid. It's normal. Everybody, nobody don't want to die. Everybody are afraid. You have to be afraid of your life. But let me tell you something. It happens that in this part of the world, and at this particular time of time, we, we, we are part of this history. It's the history of our life. It's just like as you are reading the Second World War, the First World War, this is Ambazonia War going on, boy. The boys are fighting. And believe me, at this age, somebody can never tell me what to do. I know where I'm going to. I know that my brothers took my brothers they took up one day. They say today we are we are, we have enough of these people. We have to take our decision and we are going ahead. And people need to be behind them so I can give them my voice and something can happen. That is what I'm doing. And I say to God, give them their hope and let one day that we shall see the land. One day we shall go back in our villages. One day our children will go back to school. One day they will no more kill our children. One day we shall be free. That is what. One day, me and DJ, you're the best. Am I not shame for what can give me money? But give me a lot money, first of all. DJ, you're the best, man. 
When injustice becomes law, resistance becomes a duty. DJ zero. <laughs> zero DJ. <laughs> Uh, zero DJ, you put it again. You put it again. Don't be worried. You are doing so here. Okay. I want everybody to feel hello. May please put your hands together. Why are you sleeping, man? Well, I don't know. I don't know. You know, me too. I'll be like now for some of you now. First time. But when I be see Papa Weber that day, you know, sometimes if you are life, you walk on a spirit for God to talk for you. No, not you to talk for yourself. Now the spirit of God, it produce you the words. Um, it be talked that day. But the part will be this. Am I, am I people dogs? No. That people will come my spirit. Say, no, somebody's talking at this. Somebody's talking. And that day you say, it be give this particular word. And that word remain from my brain. I just sleep at the, I just see the words all the time inside my brain. All the time, all the time. I say, no. No, so in, all my feet talk English. But some English, the way they talk, um, it will touch you. So this one will touch me. I thank you very well for that word. <laughs> TJ, you are the best. Let me give them the soup now. Okay, let's do the job. Let me go up or down. Let me be up or down. Down or up? Eh? Up or down? Don't be worried. I'm a boy. I'm a boy. Up is nice. Everybody see me. Yes. I'm not too ugly. At least you can see that I'm okay. Did you hear the best? Let go. Lance. When injustice becomes law, resistance becomes a duty. One day, God go yeah, what prayer that you one day. God go yeah, what prayer. I say one day, God go ye wa preya that ye one day oh, God go ye wa preya. Who na de fa buso, who na no get up oh that ye who na just pray oh, God go ye wa preya. Begin the nature go school, the day is a buso that ye who make we just pray oh, God go ye wa preya. Sing with me, chante. I say one day, God go ye wa preya daddy ye one day who God go ye wa preya. See ya we woman daddy bona is a buso daddy ye. Oh, begin the daddy bingo school again, mama. We did cry oh, I go cry again, no daddy ye. God go ye wa preya that ye one day who God go ye wa preya. So painful for see one brother to kill another brother. Papa God, now you want know this story. Now you want know this story. Hey, begin the day for busho. Then not get water, oh, that you then this go. God go ye wa preya. Who not get the house them? They don't bomb what has them that you make we just pray. Oh. God go ye wa preya. Sing with me. Shante. I say one day. See them when they don't go wise, them for sad so man be yeah. Oh, see how we begin the energy go school. Mommy, then they for push so. Papa, the energy walk again. No, who go feed our big in there? Shante. Who not sing? Yeah, daddy, one day who God go ye wa prayer. Begin then to die you, mommy then to die you, brother. Oh, United Nation, just to love him more. 
politician them go. They the send the soldier with that DA for Peter Brother. Who go hear this story? Yeah. Who not sing? But go hear what prayer that DA. I say, I say one day. God go hear what prayer that DA. One day who? God go hear what prayer. Merci if ke mayo el manager. Tu as cru à moi. L'éternel est mon berger. Je ne manquerai de rien. One day we shall be. God go hear what prayer. God go hear what prayer. I say one day who na sing. God go hear what prayer. Daddy one day who. God go hear what prayer. Mental foundation. Espoir des enfants du Mali. One day, God go hear what prayer that ye one day, Mama. I say, when I receive for dance, when I woke up, when I woke up, when I woke up, DJ, repeat that song. When I woke up, can dance. Fill the hall before Papa can give the spirit. Come and dance. Come and dance with me. Come and dance. Fill the hall. Fill the hall. Let me work the spirit up. Injustice became slow. Resistance becomes a duty. When I can dance with me, when I can dance with me. One day, God go here. Come this way. Come this way. Everybody this way. Everybody this way. Thank you, mommy. Everybody this way. Where are the women? Una come this way, come this way, come this way. Come and dance to me. Come and dance to me. Where are the Ambassadorian people? Come here. Doctor. See how when woman daddy bona is a push. Daddy. Oh. Begin the daddy bingo school again, mama. Who will he be crying? I go cry again. No. Daddy. One day. God go here. What prayer? Daddy. One day. God go here, we pray. I say one day, God go here, we pray. That day, one day, God go they now get what I hold that to you, then they see who God go here, what prayer who not get in house them, they don't go and house them that to you make who just pray who God go here, what prayer, see with me Sunday, God go here, what prayer that to you, one day who God go here, what prayer, come with the flocks, oh yeah, one day God go here, what prayer that to you, one day who God go here, what prayer? The care when they don't put one heart for southwest, so mommy, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. See, I will begin the energy go school, and mommy, then they for push. Oh. But for the energy work again, no, oh. who go feed our picking day? Who not see? Everybody, hands up, hands up. God go here, what prayer? Now, one day, I say, one day. God go here, what prayer that ye run the room. God go here, what prayer. The seven did die, yo. Mammy, then did die, yo. Brother, oh, United Nation. So still, I'll give me more. Politician, them more. They descend the soldier, oh, that ye for Peter, brother. Who go hear this story? Who not see? Now one day, I say one day, God go here, what prayer, daddy, one day, daddy. 
Ici Yves Kemayo, El Manager. Tu as cru à moi. Et mon berger, je ne manquerai de rien. Gloire à Dieu. Merci, champion. Yes, I. This is Ambassonia. Allez, dis ça. Allez, dis ça. À mon père et ma mère. Foundation. This is Ambazonia. Ambazonia, oh yeah! One day, Shanté. God, go your yeah, work. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I want everybody to feel funky. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I will gather them. They need blue money. I will take them. I cannot joke with money. Because how rent, how rent is the, how rent is the, yeah. You know, it's you. Oh, your flag. It's our flag, not your flag. <laughs> it's our flag. It's not her flag. That was a good one. Um, Willie de Paris, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You've really done it. You've done it. Please, um, Another hand of applause for Willy. Thank you. That was not really powerful, though. Please, another one. <laughs> thank you, Willy. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Whew. So, after that interlude, we're going to listen to a very beautiful lady coming from the UK, a sociologist, but I'll end there. I always like to give a lot of respect to women to introduce themselves. So I'm going to call on Miss Justine Ba to come up and say something to us. Thank you, thank you, sister. Um, I'm Justine Bang. I'm a sociologist, as she said, and I am a lecturer, and I am an Amazonian. Yeah, so, um, right. So um, I'm just here to give us uh, an orientation for today's program. And we must have noticed that it's a very solemn meeting, not like others. So um, ladies and gentlemen, dear brothers and sisters, we all know that we're here because of this thing. The blood of every slain Amazonian cries out to us. And we must heed to their cries now with action. I just want us to repeat that. The blood of every slain Amazonian cries out to us and we must heed to their cries now with action. Thank you. And we're here because we have Honorable Weaver who has a vision and we know that the power of vision is usually complex and sometimes very difficult to understand. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, here, the dignified people of Ambazonia at home and in the diaspora, we plead that we all stay focused for this meeting. And I will just read a direct quotation for what we would like the program to look like. Um, so I'll read. Honorable Weber and all of us who are here, we therefore plead with you that it is by giving your full attention 
to this message today that we can be able to see with clarity the vision of our freedom that burns in Honorable Weber's soul and drives him so passionately to speak and act as he does. It is by being patient and fully engaged that what drives him can in turn drive us and driving us to our main goal of liberating our homeland, which is absolutely necessary for us to be successful in the quest of our liberation and our total freedom. So today we are holding a meeting, which is different from what we've been holding in the past. Um, it's not a seminar. It's not a workshop. It's not a political meeting. It's not a governmental party. It is a meeting for the liberation of Ambazonia. Therefore, it is a revolutionary meeting. And it is for those who believe in the liberation of Ambazonia. Right. That said, as such, we would like you to know that the meeting will be run differently. And we plead that we listen attentively. May the God of Ambazonia protect us all here and take us to our freedom. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. Wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you so very much, Miss Justine Bang. We all heard her. It's not a meeting like all the others. This one is different. When I go back to our prayers that we heard, some words struck me. Listen. Hear. Understand. To be able to execute. Those words keep coming back in one form or the other. This event is not like all the others, others that we know. This is different. Thank you again, Ms. Justine. For us to have those words sink in, I will plead with the DJ to just give us a very short, really, really short interview. Very short. Thank you. Thank you so much. The blood of every slain Amazonian cries out to us. We must heed their cries now with action. We must heed their cries now with action. Um, I will go further to introduce somebody to you, um, Mr. David Guatancho. Mr. David Guatancho came all the way from the US to this event. He flew thousands of miles to get here. Well, I don't even know whether he flew. Maybe he came by sea. I don't know. He may tell us. But bottom line is he is here. He made the effort to be with us today. Um, thank you, Mr. Nguatancho, David, for taking this long journey across the lake to be with us here. Where is Mr. David Watancho? Mr. David Watancho is given the honor to introduce to us 
our guest for today. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Thank you. The man who traveled to many countries that fought for their own freedom to ask them how they did it, learn from them. The man that went to the lion's own den, La Republic's parliament, and told them, when the people of West Cameroon shall arise, you shall combine your two armies and they will not be able to bring them down. The man that told Mr. and Mrs. Diaspora, even with your rocket science, you will not be able to build a house starting from the roof to the foundation. The man with the vision for Ambazonia, the man with the vision, the vision for the liberation of Ambazonia. Ladies and gentlemen, ground zero, ground one, ground two, diaspora, believers in freedom, join me with a standing ovation to welcome Honorable Joseph Weber on stage. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters. <clears throat> Thank you very much. The chairman and ACA Germany. Germany has been the example to me of how people who want freedom can support those who are in need of freedom. So I appreciate Germany. I'm glad I am here. Yeah, you sit down. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, sit down. Sit down. Yeah. The blood of every slain Ambazonian cries out to us. I'm watching you in Germany and I'm asking the question, can you hear? The silence tells me you haven't. Can you hear the cry of blood? Can you hear? Yeah. If you can hear, how come you people out here are behaving the way you are behaving? When there is a call from the grave, people respond differently. When there is a call of the dead, people respond differently. Why have you let down your own dead? Why have we let down our dead? Before I go to the difficult questions, let me begin. You join me and we serve some honors to the people who deserve the honors of the Amazonian people. And we will begin with our fallen soldiers the slain, who are standing up and giving their blood for the freedom that we all seek. Shall we rise?
These are the flowers to them that have gone before us. And we send them our greatest honor of appreciation and humility and thanks because the only way to freedom is to give your blood. And they have given the supreme sacrifice. And we are here today to say to honor your blood and to thank you for giving up life the most precious thing to all humanity in your quest for our freedom. I am here today in a strange land to honor you with the hope and the dream that those of us you have left behind can rise up and take the freedoms that you died for. I can hear today, kneeling at your graves, be able to say, I believe in freedom. A lot of people believe in freedom. Let your blood be the ear opener so that they begin listening and learning the road, which is rugged and hard to freedom land. May you be in peace. We will bring you that freedom when we join you. Being a very solemn occasion to honor their blood. The next group of people we have to honor today are the standing soldiers of Amazonia. Those who, despite the pressure, despite the killings, despite the genocide, are standing up from the coast of Amber Bay to the savannas of Akko to say we are not the slaves of the Republic to Cameroon and we will live in a free country. I honor those soldiers. We honor them. The only message to them from Stuttgart today is just one message. If you are standing up to fight for Ambazonia, look only at the goal of freedom. I am saying this because I hear people say, we are fighting for Mr. X and Y, for Mr. and Mrs. X and Y. That is not nationhood. Look at your goal of freedom. Look at your nation. Fight for the flag. If you put your faith in that, the Ambazonian soldier, I can promise you, we will be there sooner than later. Uh, I would like you to appoint two ladies to help us with something here. Two. Come on. Beautiful people. Just, just run out, you know? Yeah. Uh, there are two photographs here of the greatest men of honor that Ambazonia ever had, which I want to share with you. One person to stand to the right and then another. Yes. Can anyone by any chance recognize these veteran fighters of the Ambazonian struggle? Raise the pictures. Raise them up. Raise them higher. Can anyone recognize these two gentlemen? To my right, whom do you recognize? His Royal Highness von Gojidinka. To my left, who do you recognize? Papa Njo Litumbe, the veteran. 
I have a reason for bringing this here today. And it is really unfortunate that these two people who have given me the greatest inspiration to fight. I am coming here after three years of being in a larger prison than Kondingi or a larger prison than my grave, which was the British Isles. After those three years, I'm coming out here when Mola has gone to rest. I would like to say today that we honor him. We revere him. We believe in the fight he fought. And that as he rests at the foot of the Fako mountain, we will bring him the story of a free country that he left behind. To my right is His Royal Highness, Hon Gojidinka, to whom we who stand here owe everything about Ambazonia. We owe it to him. He's the grandfather of this struggle. Ambazonia as a name itself, he gave it to us. And at the time he took it up, I remember how many people who were still at the university who used to refer to him. He's a madman. Uh, who can fight the whole government now? He's wasting his time. That is the spirit of the man who can liberate his people. It is both their spirits. I want to promise you that I carry. Because when you believe in freedom, nothing can stop you fighting for it. Nothing can stop you doing any other thing than getting freedom. This is to honor these two gentlemen. And the one addition I want to put in is an error we have made throughout because oppression is a very dangerous thing. Because oppression makes you believe in what does not exist. We are a united country. We believed it. People said, no, how can, you know, it's one country. How can you split it? There is nothing to split. Because the Southern Cameroonian nation has never at any one time in the history of the world been an integral part of La Republique du Cameroon. Never. It has never been. And I'm looking at these two gentlemen. The battle they put up. His Royal Highness is still alive. He is 93. Tired. And I go to see him. To confer with him. To ask for his blessing. And Papa at his age is still talking and saying, you people move quickly. I want to see the free country before I go. At 93. At 93. And his grandchildren sitting here. Oh, you know, we have done it for three years. It is too long. You know, we should end it now. We cannot go on. Look at this gentleman. His back folded over in his 90s. Still struggling to say, go for the goal. Go for the goal. Take your country that was stolen. And you, his children and grandchildren are saying, you are tired? You are talking of freedom and acting as if you want to pick a free country? You fight for it. Man, you damn fight for it. Break your bones and give your life. These are the two people who give me the greatest inspiration. For one reason, I'm just going to tell you a little story, an anecdote. When I took up the battle in the assembly, and you got the news going around the world because of social media, 
these two veterans called me on separate days and said almost the identical thing. The person who called me first was His Royal Highness and said, how did you do it? Nobody. I want to tell you, even me, I could not dare in that house. How did you do it? And then he said, and then you make me cry at my age. And he wept. And he wept. And said, I am seeing the sign that that free country is there if you could dare do this. And about a week after, Papa Molanjo called me and said, Weba, Weba, what did you just do? What did you just do? Where did you take the courage from? Now, I now believe that if people like you are now standing up and saying it, we will reach there. It was within an interval of seven days, these two gentlemen. So they are my greatest inspiration. The last thing I want to say about them before you sit down is that this honor is very special to them. For me, because there is something the French Cameroonians have put down into our psychology, which has ruined our lives till today to make us believe that we are different. The other people are from the southwest. The others are from the northwest. A nation that was independent at independence in 1961. Like southern Cameroons. And somebody tells you it is the northwest and southwest of what? An independent nation becomes a northwest or a southwest of what? Which means it is the northwest and southwest of the Republic of Cameroon. We we'll end it. We we'll end it. And how did they make sure this became a part of our psyche? One, has any of you ever known the reason that for 50 something years, there was no road linking Boya and Bamenda. It was designed. It was designed. The number of our people who died traveling through East Cameroon to get back to Boya from Bamenda and vice versa. The number of people who died following a 400 mile road that could have been done in 190. Can you believe it? The target was to make us believe that we are different people. And then we started believing it. Then we started believing it. Everywhere I talk, I always quote my grandfather because I think he was the greatest philosopher that ever lived. He always told us, a man with a large family will have tall children. He will have short ones. He will have brilliant ones. He will have Fairly silly guys. Does it make it not to be his children? Does it make somebody who lives in the north and that in the south limit them from being brothers and sisters of the same nation? It does not. So we have to end that beginning today. We have to end that beginning today. I am going to ask everybody to stand up again because if I point at two people that you have never known and they look like me, can you say who comes from the north or the south? Can you be able to do it? It is sheer stupidity. I want us to look at each other. Look at the person next to you and say, we've been stupid for 60 years and we are wiser now. <laughs> All right? We've been stupid for 60 years and we are wiser now. Come on. For 60 years. That is what we have done to ourselves. And we kept saying, oh, you know, these are people from the Northwest. They are always like this and like that. Going back to my grandfather, he advised, when you have tall children and short ones, you know his own philosophy? 
Your short child will have no reason to be piling chairs to pick bananas from because he can fall and break a leg. Because that child can fall and break a leg and then you'll be looking for someone to repair a broken bone. That is the reason for tall and short children, for fair colored and darker ones. That is the reason. We have to start getting out of that stupidity from this moment. All I know is the nation of Amazonia is one brilliant, wholesome, and beautiful. And very beautiful. As a nation, we will always have taller people and shorter people. We will always have people who are braver than others. We will always have people who are different. Oh, for people who have had the fortune, even of bearing twins, the two guys come out from the same womb. Do they look the same? And then you want us to be the same in one way. Somebody has to live down south. Somebody has to live up north. So that what cannot be produced in the south can be brought in from the north. And what cannot be done in the north can be brought in from the south. And with that, I would plead with the gentle ladies to please can we sit down now and we give the last honors to people who we can respect with all our lives? You can leave them there. The reason you are sitting down is because the next honors we need to give are to people who would usually sit down or lie down to give birth to us. The women of Amazonia. We give you the greatest honor we can today because you have seen it all. If it is the children they are killing, they are yours. If it is the men they are burning down, they are your husbands, they are your fathers. If it is the mothers who are being broken, they are your mothers just like they are ours. So we give our greatest honor to your Amazonian woman because she has borne the brunt of this struggle. They have borne the brunt of this struggle and we should give them that respect. I would like us to give a loud cheer and a big clap to the Amazonian woman for her courage. Mm, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Very much appreciated. Now, we were at a stage where we needed to give this on us. And there's something here I want us to begin today's discussion with. We are in Germany. And I would like to start this by introducing myself. Because when people refer to me as a certain person, I feel uncomfortable. Why I'm saying it is because I'm a rebellious person. And when people start making me feel that I am very important, I start feeling ashamed. Because that is how something runs into your head and you start mistreating people because you think you are different. The power of symbols as the blood of every slain Amazonian cries out, we have to associate something to it. The power of symbols. The biggest Amazonian symbol is what? The flag. The flag people fight and die for. And the next is what? The anthem. The next is the anthem. 
So we are now looking for other symbols to start attaching to the process of liberation. We are looking for those symbols. Willie, yes, I heard you and we saw you and we appreciate you, Willie. You and your artists of Ambazonia now have a task. No free nation goes to freedom without song and dance that identifies them as a people. Go now to your workrooms and begin the process of giving us freedom songs. That said, The next symbol we are going to focus on is we need to build things around which our revolution evolves. We need to build an identity for the Amazonian revolution. And how do you do that? You do not do that by... Because we mentioned two things here, that the first one was the flag, the second was the... Yes. But what I have noticed sitting quietly in Britain for three years is that the third symbol of our struggle, at least in the diaspora, is self-injury, fighting each other. That is the best identity that has come out of all we have been doing. And that identity is the one we need to put behind, to put away, and keep looking at what? The goal of Freedom. There is something we are going to be doing here today throughout this evening. Shall we all rise? If you came here without the energy to go fight, to liberate Ambazonia, I am sorry. I will not apologize. That is why the chairperson of the German SCA sent out information saying we were asking believers in the Amazonian struggle, to come here. And if I came here and saw seven of them, I would know that we are ready to take a free country. Because believers are the people who drive the engine of freedom. Because the people who go for freedom, as it is, are not people who just want the casual thing. They are ready to do the difficult thing. So, we have a new symbol. We have a new symbol. And that new symbol, what I'm going to first of all announce is we have people in this hall. I do not know if everybody who is standing here before us is a believer in Amazonian freedom. But if anyone is not, I would advise them that before we begin the next segment, you will be better off outside of this hall than inside because the things we are going to say and do could burn you down and burn your spirit down. So from today onwards, from today onwards, we have a pledge. You saw me kneel down to the foreign soldiers. We have a pledge to the blood of Amazonian that has flown. We will be taking that pledge at every turn that we have something that has to do with the Amazonian struggle. We'll be taking the pledge all the time to remind us that this is no child's play. It is something for which we are committing. I want to give a second chance to anybody here who is not a believer in freedom to please step out. And if you are not a believer in Amazonian freedom, please step out. Because we could do something that could harm you. Yes, I'm serious about it. Right. As we have our hands across the chest to sing the anthem, shall we have them there and repeat these words? Upon the blood of every slain Amazonian, we each turn and pledge to fight with everything it takes to liberate our beloved homeland. Right. 
hear me go through it. Upon the blood of every slain Ambazonian, we each stand and pledge to fight with everything it takes to liberate our beloved homeland. It is a very important factor. Shall we go through that again? Upon the blood of every slain Ambazonian, we each stand and pledge to fight with everything it takes to liberate our beloved homeland. Thank you very much. You may sit down. Thank you. It will never be taken. It will never be taken. Never. It will never be taken. Now, let's get down to the business of the day. The honors were over. We now have a pledge. Let's get down to the business of the day. And I want to say I am proud to be in Germany once more. And I'm going to tell you a little story about how much I fell in love with something German and I did not know that that thing would change my life and influence my life for all time. I was a high school student and philosophy was introduced as a new subject that year in high school. And I chose to go and do it. Then I met the best friends I could ever make through reading. Karl Marx and Friedrich Hegel. And I said, my God, these guys, you know, they really say some interesting things. And I took them down. Little did I know that my attachment to those little things they said simply meant I was as good a rebel as they were because both gentlemen died in exile. They were pushed out of Germany. So I wouldn't be surprised. I hope it shouldn't happen. I want to go back to a free country. I mustn't die in exile. Yes. So, W. H. Hegel says, and I quote, Freiheit, a land manor, in them man sein Leben aus Pieces. End of quote. English version, it is solely by risking life that freedom is obtained. It is solely, solely in English means the only way. Solely in English means it is unique. There are no two ways to read. I am giving this citation because we have behaved as if there are two ways to freedom. There are none. There's just, there's just one way. The hard way, the only way. No nation has ever been free without giving its blood. No nation has ever been free without giving its blood. That's why I'm saying if there's anyone here who doesn't believe in freedom, leave. Because the things you are going to hear here, if you start matching it with the political statements we've been making and flying all over the internet, we will not get to freedom. We will not get to freedom. And we should because and we must because there are believers who are ready to do what? Risk life to get freedom. The soldiers on the ground who are standing and dying, they are risking what? Life to get freedom. All our mothers who have been burned down in the ongoing genocide are doing what? They are risking what? Life to get freedom. We cannot do it without it. So ladies and gentlemen, that is the core of what we need to know in fighting for freedom. We will be going step by step, and I will let you know exactly what we need to do to get to where we want to be.
Mr. Chairman of the SCA, I appreciated your introductory word in welcoming us. And uh, I would like now that we move to the second part, which would be, I want to update the Amazonian nation from the homeland to ground one and to the diaspora that I've spent three years in the United Kingdom on exile. And I want to update you as a people and then show you the power there is in walking in discretion. Because my outcry from when I got out here was to tell the diaspora, I think you are running in the wrong direction. And nobody listened. Then I keep saying the same things and nobody's listening. So, what I want to do here is to update you so that people begin to learn. Liberators, revolutionaries, people who want freedom, they walk in what? In discretion. When we did the book launch in London three years ago, I told you people that the work of liberation is done in the back rooms. It is done in the back rooms. You cannot do liberation from your market square. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. How do you allow your oppressor to know how you think? And then you think you will beat him. How do you permit that? Then when someone like me, when I'm running away from everybody else, oh, he doesn't talk to people. You know, he's just sitting there. He's doing nothing. And I'm saying, if I have the work of liberation to do, I don't owe it to anybody to explain. Because if we want a free country, every individual will make a choice on their own. I believe in freedom. I listen to him. And he's turned me up. Will you thank you very much? You choose, you made a decision. And the cause for liberation needs people who stand up and say, hey, I'm not going to take this. Does any of you believe that I took a risk on my life doing what I did in the National Assembly? I don't know. All right. I'm just saying that Yes. I'm just saying that in order to clear the air, all right. Not ever. They will never take it out of our mouths again. I was just saying something that if you believe, if you believe that I, thank you, that I took a risk on behalf of all of you. Because when I stood in that house, I reminded the speaker that I know his security apparatus in the assembly has 16 gendarme officers. So I was sure they would take me down. And when it turns out that I run away to secure my life because I believe like Bob Marley says, he who fights and runs away lives to fight another day. Can anybody want to believe that I did all of that? Ran away to Nigeria, went and came back and said, we will begin from where we stopped. 
that I did all of that in order to come out to the diaspora and compete with internet politicians over a contest about whether who is ahead of what. No liberator does that. A liberator does not know if he will last another 24 hours. So a liberator can never actually be preparing himself to have a seat. Where? The only seat that belongs to a liberator, first, is his grave. Second, a prison cell. Third, exile. And I want you to celebrate with me that I am not in the first two. I want us to celebrate this that I'm not in the first two because they have given me a chance to undo what we have not been able to do for long. That chance is there. And the believers in freedom will get the job done. So the work I have been doing for three years has consisted of working with the MPs in the House of Commons and the House of Lords in the UK just to tell our story. Because there is one presumption we have had out here in the diaspora that when we go and demonstrate, demonstrations have their place in a struggle. When we go and demonstrate in Berlin, in Stuttgart, the whole of the German government have now known that we have a problem, so they will solve it. It's not true. They have their own problems. They have their own issues to handle. So I went around making sure I was telling the story to the right people. And believe you me, you would not believe the level of ignorance. I have had four cabinet ministerial meetings. I mean, real cabinet meetings of British ministers. I mean, I don't mean the ones on the internet who are quarreling with everybody, you know. I mean, real ministers. We have sat down and I'm telling your story to them so that they should understand, so that they should know. And I was surprised. And one of them told me, hey, when someone told me two years ago that Cameroon had a problem, and the whole problem was because of English language. I was wondering because I know this is a French country. How can English be a problem in a French country? That is how much we had been reduced to the northwest and the southwest of what? I'm glad you remember. So we've been telling these stories and moving the ball forward. The rest of the things are not things that we discuss in places like this. Because those things are not done in the market square. There are people who would trust you with information that if they ever heard it out, it's finished. They can never, you can never knock their door and they open. So that's how careful we've been with that. Then the famous thing that is taking us around the Swiss process. The Swiss process. I have had I have had four official meetings with HD in the past two years. I had a fifth in a private capacity. And I want to tell you I went through all those meetings, putting them to task, going through the motions, because I know how peace processes work. I have never participated in any, but I have learned, I have met people, I have gone to places where peace processes were conducted, and I know how they are done. And when I met them, I asked for the basics that makes the foundation for a peace process to stand. I found none. I am saying this today because these are meetings that have been going on in the past. I found none. It is no discredit to HD because when they came to me, I advised them. I said, look, the problem we have 
Southern Cameroonians, the problem they have with the Republic, with La Republic to Cameroon, is it a situation and a dangerous situation of a stolen state. They stole our state of Southern Cameroon and want to make it an appendage of the Republic of Cameroon. If you people want to participate in this and want to invite us, I want to see the basics. Because the question I ask every time I go to anything is, what is it need for my people? What is in it for my people? Then I saw HD rushing. Peace processes are never rushed. That was the first red sign that I saw. They were rushing. Oh, you know, we just want to do this here and do this here. I said, that's not how it works. When you bring me A, B, C, there will be proof that the person killing us has recognized that they need to stop and want us to talk with them. If A, B, C, which I cannot name to you, are not there, then all of these things we are saying are nothing. Because the southern Cameroonian people, as a nation, they deserve better respect. I took my time and analyzed it to them. Officer after officer, they sent me seven different people. This one will come with another one. They bring this other person. And I talked to them. I said, look, this is not how it works. The process works this way. And I gave them advice. I gave them advice. I said, look, in my culture, a man can carry an empty pot, an empty, large, empty water pot to the stream. But when he fills it with water, he would need other men to do what? He put it on his head. If he tries to do it alone, the risk is double. Either he's going to break his backbone or the pot is going to break. Which means I told HD, you are punching above your weight. If you think that the problem we have, because Paul Beer is a citizen of your country. Switzerland is Paul Beer's best friend. Our stolen resources are stashed in Swiss banks. And you want to give me the impression that you can be a referee. Us and the Republic is false. That was a simple analysis I gave them. I said it's false. But you can get people to help you. So I'm here to say in those meetings, I found out that there was nothing that could be beneficial to the southern Cameroonian people who had been deprived of their nationhood. Because perhaps in Asia's mind, they presumed erroneously that our problem was like, well, what is happening in Central Africa? You know, what is happening here and there? I said, please, it's not. A state was stolen. We want to break the bones of the thief and take it back. We want to break the bones of the thief and take it back. So, that said, um, you people must have heard that uh, I wrote a book. You must have heard. I wrote a book some time ago. Yes, The Weber Force. And um, while I've been waiting for these three years, I've been asking myself, following my father's standard advice, when you are a fallen soldier, you can still load the kind of gun you can shoot from a lying position. When your legs are no longer strong to stand and shoot a bow and arrow, you can see the type of bow and arrow that you can shoot from a sitting position. So I started looking into myself and finding out, what is it I have that can go to the service of the Amazonian people? That can go to the service to give them relief in the struggle that I can no longer participate in on the front line. So I started writing letters. Just letters, writing letters to people, pleading, literally on my knees. These are my people. 
These are the hundreds of thousands in refugee camps. These are the ones in jail. This is what is happening here. This is what is happening here. And your young brother is here, Dr. Mofo. And I told him, you know something? He said, no. I said, I think we need a vast amount of money to start doing work for our people. And now that I'm sitting here doing nothing, and I cannot even travel, what do we do? This is the process I have taken. And I wrote letters to organizations, to people, good people. Sooner or later, they started responding. And it was very simple. All I did was, I would write a letter to a certain Mr. X, Organization X, and say, my people are in trouble. There's an ongoing genocide in my homeland. This is the state of this. This is the state of this. This is the state of this. I am pleading with you to please sign a copy of one book and give us a donation that can give even water to children who are starving in refugee camps, to prisoners who have nothing to eat, and people who are humane understood it and started responding. Mofo, would you mind helping me in the process of, you know, uh, updating our people about the things, you know, that have happened as a result of all of the letters we've written and how people have responded and what we've been able to put together to begin certain elementary pieces of work. I will be pledging with your indulgence to be patient. Yes, to be patient because we... Sorry, sir. All right, all right. Yes, so... You'll be about, yes, you should, uh, or you'll be more comfortable from there. All right, all right. Hello. I hope everyone can hear me. I'm somewhat tired because uh, I was able to go to bed only at 3. 30 this morning. We have been working a lot and trying to make things work. Um, he said one thing, which I will say in German because we are here. He said, Freiheit, a land man nur in dem man sein Leben auf Spiel setzt. It is solely by risking life that freedom is achieved. And um, there are some things that concern him that he doesn't even remember, that he doesn't even think of. And uh, there are some things that he cannot even say about himself. But before I talk about the book and how we have struggled to raise funds for our liberation, I want to point to a few things which have enabled me to confirm a man's vision for the freedom of his people. Yes, Honorable, you can sit down. I'll make it short. A few things which I want to mention that have enabled me to confirm a man's vision for the freedom. When Honorable Weber spoke, in the Kangaroo Parliament of French Cameroon in 2016. That was in December. I think everyone, every Southern Cameroonian shared that vision. Every Southern Cameroonian saw that there was someone talking on their behalf and I was not left out. Someone talking against the oppressive system which has been imposed on us by French Cameroon and their masters. And I contacted him. I told him that, Honorable, if you would keep your integrity, because we know that politicians can easily be corrupted. I told him that if you will keep your integrity, 
you have my support. That was in 2016. And from that time, we began walking a long road to where we are today. The time came when the oppressor began arresting leaders. We had some of them who were arrested in January 2017. And we got clear indications that he was going to be arrested. At the same time, with Ba uh, Ayapo, there were very clear indications. And I told him, I said, Honorable, you cannot sit there. You have to get to safety. And he said, no, Mofo, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to sit here in Jakiri because this fight must continue and I want to fight from within. And uh, I was here and I kept on seeing the things I see sometimes. And I insisted to him that you have to go for safety. And he refused. The time came when there were serious threats on his life, very serious threats. And to be honest, I had to push him and say, Honorable, this is where you are going. And as he said, he had to get himself to safety. And that is where I would like to um, leave that one day. But when he went to Nigeria, finally, when it was clear that we would pick him up, threats on his life to kill him. While he was in Nigeria, it was around January to March, around that period, he kept on seeing how the revolution was evolving and he was very worried. He was constantly in contact with him. He was extremely worried. And he said he wants to come back. I said, oh, no, no, but you have to wait. He said, no, Mofo, I have to come back. I have to go to that parliament and keep up this fight. And when I saw that he had insisted, we had to walk the way for him to come back to the parliament. That is when he came back to the parliament in June 2017, taking the risk, although he knew that there were already clear threats on his life. And when he came there, my heart was always beating because um, I knew what was happening. This one takes me to the next stage where I saw someone very determined to fight for the freedom of his people. And while he was in ground one in Nigeria, the time came when our brothers were picked up at the Nera Hotel. I was the one who told him that our brothers were picked up at Nera Hotel. And he was shocked and he really lamented and, you know, he couldn't even hold himself. Then we saw that it has become very dangerous, even for him in Nigeria, in Grand One. And we had to look for ways to take him out of there. And that is how he finally found himself in the UK. The time in the UK has been extremely difficult. Imagine someone of his, let's say of his caliber, who comes to a foreign nation to seek for protection and is left there without any support from the system. He abandoned everything. And the first time he ran away for his safety, he left a child that was eight months old. I was in Jakiri, 2017, and I saw that child. And he living in the UK for three years without support and surviving merely through the goodwill of friends. And we got messages coming, people telling him that Honorable Weba, you have to come out and take over this revolution. Honorable Weba, you have to take your place in this revolution. You have to come out and say something when things will happen we received countless requests for him to get active in public. And the thing he kept, on, he kept on telling us, when I say us, I mean the group of people in the team around him. He kept on telling us that Mofo, 
we told the team that we would get to work when we would have been able to raise $100,000 for the sake of our people's liberation. And obviously, I also understood that he would be able to do the kind of contribution that he would want to do. Because, you know, it's not like he was just silent. As he said, we were doing a lot of things and we don't need to come to the public to explain the way we do our revolutionary work. So long as we knew that we were doing all of that in the interest of Ambazonia, we kept on doing that and only the results should speak for Ambazonia, not even for us. Then, he, so it was obvious that when he would be able to move, then his contribution would definitely um, become, let's say, more intensified. And then we were writing these letters that he said, we will send these letters to some people and explain to them. They will sign these books and they gave donations. And those donations, we kept on, you know, gathering this money. So the first thing is that first condition that he should be able to move. And today he is here after going through a very hard asylum process, very unconventional conventional asylum process. But finally he is here as a free man and he is able to move all over. Then the other thing he said was that, told the team that we would have to see that an account be opened in a different country where all this money which is coming in through the letters we were writing and the books that we were sending to people whom we consider donors or potential donors. The one thing he does not like is for us to go asking people to come and give money to go and uh, do revolution, as he said. And so, finally, um, we came to the stage that an account was open in a foreign country, and two ladies and one gentleman are the ones who are signatory to that account. And one thing he told me particularly is that, Mofo, I will not want you to be signatory to that account because he thought that with my nature, if there are some difficulties, um, it would, it, it might lead us to, to let's say, uh, I may pity him and, you know, use some of the money for the things that were standing in front of us, really, really difficult things. And one thing he also mentioned is that with the kind of things that we need to do for this liberation, a liberator does not need to have access to money. And that is something about honesty. And then, uh, finally, we got the $100,000 that he was talking about. And we had started doing the things we had to do to make our struggle progress. Three things in our focus. Next page. Refugees, refugee children's relief service prisoners relief assistance and desperate human needs. This is the focus. And I'm sure he will say a bit more. And all of this work is already ongoing. And this is what we want to report to you also today. I need to add that when the signing of the book had reached $70,000, Honorable and all of us were facing real financial 
challenges because he had got accrued rents that were not paid. And I told him that, Honorable, we have these accrued rents for several months now. Why can't we borrow some money from the $70,000 uh, uh, and pay these rents? And then we will repay the money to these funds. And Honorable became very mad at me. He was so angry. He said, Mofo, do you realize that you are asking us to borrow money which is intended for those children, those mothers who are in refugee camps in round one, or those who are suffering, prisoners who have not committed any crime uh, and are in the dungeons of our oppressor. Do you realize that this is what you are asking me to do? And then I closed my door that day in the office and I lamented. And I told myself that if one man can go this extent to sacrifice for the freedom of his people and keeping in mind that freedom can be achieved only when people risk their lives, then I said that I would be able to risk my own life by fighting at the side. So, fellow brothers and sisters, Honor Weber's vision is something which I have been able to confirm with the kind of things that I've explained to you, and there are many more which I cannot explain today. So, there is just a little thing here which we would like to share with you. Honorable, maybe you want to come up and then we move through the, the slides. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, uh, I appreciate uh, you, my dear brother, Mofo, I appreciate it very, very much. Um, my dear brothers and sisters, revolutions, people who want freedom, do it on belief. And the belief has to be so strong that you can give everything you have. If you are not there yet, if you are not at that stage, forget it. Forget it. You give your all. I am sure for many people, uh, uh, as more for, even more for even for God, that uh, uh, a last 25,000 came in from two donors, from two books. That makes it a hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. I am sure. I am sure. I mean, this is not being insulting to anybody. I am sure that I have been reminding the diaspora that some of the things I hear from you who are claiming to be leading the revolution who are claiming to be liberators, they shock me because some of you act, I keep reminding you, you keep acting as if you left home to go to the diaspora to come back and save us. It's a lie. You did not. You left home because you couldn't stand oppression. You left home because you wanted something better for yourself. And those of us who were walking the mud and drinking palm tree and eating a chew and kwakuku Bible, we definitely would know a thing or two about oppression that you do not know. No matter how intelligent you are, 
no matter how intelligent you are. So you have to learn to give your all. Here we are going to do a quick rundown. Uh, and before we start, you can see uh, a title, The Elite Givers International. Uh, it's a formation I came up with and invited some good ladies and gentlemen of the Southern Cameroons to join me. So we are in the process of doing registration with the Charities Commission in the UK so that we can turn this into something that can give a sustainable system that can assist our people. That can assist our people who are in need. In that method, if we go down that road, it is very easy for us to put together the things that can solve the problems we have. And as Mofo reminded you, I keep telling him, uh, I could shout at you, Mofo. Uh, I'm not sorry for it. Because the reason I was saying do an account in a foreign country was for one simple reason. I know money better than most. I have earned quite a lot of it and spent it on humanity because I ran a charity myself that took care of all sorts of little, little things that people struggle with in the village. And my focus usually was women and children. So in doing the things that I do in my life, uh, I've been telling people that my values, my highest values are human. My values are not economic. I have no value for money. Because money is just paper. And it has no use until a human being who does not have it is saved by it. That money has no use. So I am here today to tell you, Ambazonians, that the heritage of the Ambazonian nation will be your children. And your children's heritage will not be the bank accounts you are keeping in Berlin, Manchester, New York City, and Hong Kong. It will never be. People's heritage is a homeland. Whatever you have there belongs to that nation that borrowed you from Ambazonia. Finish. Whatever you have there has no meaning. So until we reach a stage when you take that all and say, my children and their own children must have a homeland, your money is nothing. Wood ash is better because if you take a mega juice. So let's, let's begin and uh, show you a few things. Now, this is the team that we've been able to create on the ground in Nigeria uh, to help us. It is made up of both Amazonians and friendly Nigerians who have been very, very useful. Um, uh, as Mofo was saying, every time I'm talking to you people, this young lady, she's Nigerian. This one of our brothers with whom she's collaborated. The rest of this team are the people who have been working relentlessly to give us the statistics of what is happening in the refugee camps. That's why I told you that I needed to be telling you the power of doing work with your mouth shut. And I'm here today to tell Ambazonians, if you don't shut your mouth and shut some of those your forums where you have decided that your own freedom will come through the forums and the fora and everything you are forming. If you don't shut them down, you and your children will remain slaves of the Republic forever. If you don't shut them down and begin work, and it is the kind of work that nobody should know about until the job is done. So we have this wonderful team, uh, more for which so what we did first was we are running a program in which for the children's relief service we we provided 25 tons of food 25 tons of food which 
we selected that we would give it only to young children between the ages of 2 and 14. By the time we finish the presentation, you will see the portion of money we put away to this was 30 million CFA. And we've rented these warehouses. We are hoping that if we have people who can see this vision, we could make this sustainable by keeping those shops permanently and then stocking up the food that can assist those people. Some of the Nigerian officers will be talking here to you what, what we are doing means to those your people whom you can easily sit here and relax and talk about, oh, you know, we hear they are suffering. Okay, you know, they are in refugee camps. Okay, that is not how it works. We have to have a direct touch with humanity because the reason I've been insisting on my values is because I will fight for you and everybody else with my last breath. But I will never fight with anybody over a 10 euro bill. Never. You take it from me. I'll give it to you. If it's a million, you take it. I'll never fight for it. I'll never. But I will fight to protect a child with my neck. That is me. And anyone who stands up to talk about liberation, if we do not create a country for the unfortunate, what country are we building? What country are we building? You build a country that protects those who have nothing. You build a country that protects the unfortunate, the old, the children, the sick. You cannot build a country in which you will just group your friends like you do around here. Just group your friends and say, um, as I was coming here today, by the way, it's a distraction. Oh, the fear was, you know, we by coming to form another government. He's trying to overthrow all the other governments. And I'm saying, you fly a kite and think we back and ride it for an airplane? I don't do stuff like that. I don't. I don't. And I will never, never, if you go back to my history, find out from the SDF, the people who fought in the streets in the 90s to make the SDF stand, I am one of them. I don't know how I survived it, but I'm here. Why? Because I believed in freedom. And for all that fighting, I sat back and was campaigning for people and sending them to parliament for 20 years. I didn't ask for a seat. But when I go to a state where I discovered that these guys are just going, they come back and tell me stories of champagne parties. When your people are suffering, I said, okay, it is time for me to go. And when I was going, I told them from my constituency, I said, I want to go to this place and change how politics is done. And they said, what are you talking about? What can you change? When my day came, you saw it. Now there is a chance I could have another day to take back our stolen country. I will give my neck to take it. I will give my neck to take it. So that those of you whose business is running government, running administrations, running all of those things, if that is your own business that you find fun with in your life, you can, yeah, you can stay behind and work on our blood, including those we're honoring here, and go take, uh, you know, go be anything you want. I don't give a damn. So I will never fight or contest with anybody about having a certain advantage or having a certain position or having a certain power. What are you doing with it? What are you doing with it? It is work. Hard work. The job of liberation is tough. It's tough work. There's been more talking from the people who define that they are leaders because there's little work they are doing. If you are doing the hard work, nobody hears you. Nobody. If you sit for eight hours, nine, working out strategies on what you do when you see children crying helpless, some crawling, because they just want one cup of rice. If you are worrying about things like that, you would not have time to be talking about those things. You wouldn't. So, Dr. Mopo, oh, sorry, sir. So, 
This is part of what that team was doing. And uh, you can see how they had to set these things up, package them, and then take them in little, little uh, bags to give these children. And by the way, we have, as we speak, 135,000 people in refugee camps all over Nigeria. And what we made provision for, we only went to five of the over 25 settlements where we have refugees. Five. And you put down 25 tons of food, you see the little bag your daughter is taking home. Because between them, we did this service to 7,000 children. 7,000. All right. Now, these are the refugee camps that we, we, we are working with. Um, uh, you can see the uh, Adagom 1, Adagom 3, Okende, Agbokim Waterfall, and Ikom. The, these are in the Ogoja area, which I had frequented a lot when I was hiding out in Nigeria. And in my usual style, I will do those things, examining them and doing research because I think it is beneficial. It is not for you to know. When there is something you as a people need to know, I put something on the table. That is why when I tell Mofo and the team that I don't make promises and I don't take them. If there is something you cannot do for me, tell me, Wiba, I'm sorry. I cannot do this. Because that's what I would tell you. Rather than you know, uh, just begin to go. You know, we will do something. What is the name of something? What is something? Something is as good as nothing. It's as good as nothing. So, um, so these are our two key partners who are looking after these children. And look at the clouds you see there. Look at the clouds you see there. These Ambazonia, these are your children. These are your children. You can see the misery. You can see the excitement for a few cups of rice. And we are talking about looking for freedom. Now, there is a little story about this little boy. About this little boy sitting down here. You can see him. All right. Uh, you can see the little girl looking at him. Because the little guy is crying. They had come there very early in order to take the front line. And the little boy was crying and saying that they hope that, you know, they will come and get the food early because their mama is sick. They wanted to go back and cook something to give her. And he cried and went on the floor because he could no longer support himself. These are the stories of your nation. And you in the diaspora think that by the time you would have formed the 900th government, you will go and get freedom. It's a lie. It's a lie. So, these are your children. First, the organizers, they bring them, they register them, they line them up. We even had to go as far as looking for indelible ink to put it in their fingers. Because they are so desperate, some take the food, run very quickly, hide it, and crawl from under the heads and come back and say, I have not had it yet. And you cannot blame the poor children. You cannot blame them. All right, bros. Now, look at this child. Look at the despondence on his face. It's a whole bucket he's carrying. Maybe to come and take five cups of rice or six. These are your children. Because if you do not have the feeling that someone else's child, you can treat them like you are. What are you freeing the country for? You freeing the country because you want to be president? Really? You want a free country because you want to be a minister? That's your reason. Then you have no reason at all. One of the things I want to let you people know is I am looking at these children and I'm asking myself, the dangerous things I've done in my life, and I'll tell you an anecdote. My old mother is 87. She's still alive. 
I spoke to her this morning and I said, what drove me from home is bringing me to Germany to begin the process of seeing how we can take back this stolen country that we had. And I'm calling you like the God that I know to bless me. Because the dangerous things I've done in my life, she has known them. And she knows that I'm a daring child. Sometimes I feel sorry for her. But there's nothing I can do. Because there is something that eats you up about oppression that you can, your soul is restless. Your soul is restless. So, I remember him. It is rare, especially in a culture, the warrior culture of soul like mine. I told my mom I wanted to get married when I was 24 years old. And you said, oh no, boy, it's too early. Come on. A man should grow up, you know. You are just about to have a job. Get the job, build this, do this, and then get married. I said, mom, there's something in my heart. And she said, what is it, my son? And I told her, I don't know how you are going to feel about this. The things that go through my mind about how our people are treated in this country, I think this government will kill me before I get to have a, an offspring. So I want to marry early so that if they kill me sooner, there could be one child left behind who could bear my name. And she wept. And they said, all right, I understand. Now, I am connecting these stories to you so that you know what drives someone to do certain things. What drives you to do certain things? I was quoting to you, her girl from here, things that I learned in high school in 1980. I did not know that that is how my life had been charted out. But when I see this, especially this particular picture, no, can we have it back? Yeah, these two children from the same family. The story was told us. What I want to call, you can see the level of despondence. You can see a grown-up child with a little sister sucking his, that is a sign that he is not a well-balanced child. He's unhappy, he's miserable. That's a source of comfort for people who know a little bit of child psychology. Because at that age, he should not be doing it. It is the desperation. Now, you have the genius sister. And that is where I want to call your attention. And I was honoring the women of Ambazonia. You can see that the bigger man, who is his brother, has no bag. It is a woman carrying it. That is the responsibility our women carry throughout their lives. Even from this age. Even from this age. And we are talking about freedom. And you cannot see this. And the 200 governments we have formed on the internet, they cannot give us statistics and show us where these children are lying. Then when we get Ambazonia, what would it be? A country for you and your strong friends who fought by you and promoted you and did propaganda on your behalf. Nothing doing. We will get a free country for people like this. These people have to go back home. They have to go back to their homeland in a free country. Now, um, there is this picture of, this is the most beautiful picture that came back from Nigeria. And I saw these two sweet little ones with the tropical sunshine. And they were telling me they couldn't even see well. And she was asking the young lady, you know, asking her, Blessing, Blessing is the lady's name, who's been helping us. They are asking her, because they cannot see well, what's in there said, is some of the food cooked, because they want to be eating. He said, no, you have to take it home, because they can't see it. All right? So, these are your children, Ambazonia. Before you talk freedom, talk humanity. So, so this, is, this, is, this is how we went. This is how the promotion was done. Little, little kids. This little child gave us a remarkable picture. Look at those eyes. Blank. A blank face. 
hopeless, helpless, needy. And if you look at those jaws, they are not a sign of being fully fed. They are a sign of malnutrition for people who know it. They are a sign that any kind of carbohydrate that comes is just swallowed. Ambazonia, these are your children. Anyone who doesn't talk in these terms, don't talk to me. Don't talk to me. Now, this is one. This little boy, they are one of those who came. Can you look at his blank face? Can you look at the hopelessness? And they are waiting in line. People are screaming. As young as he is, he doesn't have enough energy to keep standing on that line to wait for the food to take home. These are your children. All right. But now, um, do we have one of those uh, videos that you have crossed? All right. I, I just want you to appreciate that crowd. Sorry? Yeah, there's just a little, you know, it's not much, but it's just for them to see, you know. Look at the place. Look at the thousands of children who are yours. Now, these are things we need to know. These are things you need to look at. These are things you need to understand. And will you please uh, follow up? Uh... Amazonia, this is your story. This is your story. This is the story of your children. All right. Thank you. 
Ambazonia, that is your story. That is your story. And it shocks me that for people who should, first of all, know better, having left a backward civilization in Africa, coming out into the West, that we cannot do better than we are doing. It's a shame. It's a shame. That's why I kept saying, if we believe in freedom, we need to start doing things differently and thinking differently. It needs a total mind shift. So, that said, we needed for you to, you know, I'm sure we are through with this, uh, Dr. Mofo. Thank you very much. So, that is what is happening to your children in those refugee camps. Um, then the other relief formula is the one that we put together for those whose liberty have been deprived, for those prisoners without a crime. So, we've set another little team. The people live in different countries. We have left 15 million CFA at their disposal because lots and lots of times I hear stories of children dying in a prison cell because a child had a hernia that needed 45,000 CFA and it wasn't there and the guy died. Someone who was standing to defend his nation and protect it from the thief is dying because of 45,000. It's a shame. It is shocking. And you people are running in circles abroad, you know, describing impossible things. Where is a nation without its children? What nation are we building? So, thank you very much. Shall we proceed? Yes. This is rather heartbreaking, but we have to follow that. Now, I will give you the reason I am here. This was just an update. The real business of what we need to be doing and where we need to go will begin when today's meeting ends. Well, a lot of people have been struggling to introduce me. But I would like to say something about me. That my names are Weba Joseph Bidzinyu. I believe in freedom. I am hard-headed. That one I know. I fight very hard for the things I believe in. Especially if those things have to come with protecting humanity. The things you are going to be hearing from me this evening might not be the things you were expecting. Because I was coming here, people are calling, they are writing, they are, you know, uh, you know, we by coming to form a government. Oh, please call for this unity. Oh, please call for this and that. And I am asking, where do you think I have the power to call anybody to do anything? I don't have it. I don't have the power. It's a presumption. I don't have it. I don't have it. Number one, anyone who wants freedom for his nation, there are things you cannot do. There are things you stop yourself from doing. There are things you must not do or never do. We cannot be talking about wanting to free our homeland and then people are worried about where will I be sitting when the homeland comes to us? My God. 
Where will I be when it happens? First, I consider. First of all, that somebody like me, from the things I have done with my life in fighting the oppressive system, I don't think that I will be alive. I don't think. But in a rare situation where God who gives life permits it, I will fight for it and enjoy it with the last three people I promised La Republic that when they would have taken down from the eight million, nine, when we have taken down seven million, nine hundred and ninety-seven people, the last three people will live in a free country called Amazonia. I can tell you that. The last three. Now, I am here for one main reason. To bring you, Amazonian people, the truths that you are hiding from, you are avoiding, in order to be convenient, in order to be comfortable. I'm bringing those truths to you today, naked and bare. I don't know what anybody feels about the truth. It is your problem. As long as it is the truth, I stand by it. And I will stand by the truth even alone. I have the fortune that I know that when you are dying, my grandfather taught me as a warrior, when you are dying, you cannot take your children with you. I know that. That is why for most fights, when I look around, and I realize I might not have someone to back me up. I go with my head. Alone. I go alone. The things you are seeing here, the warning I gave in 2019. And I told you that I was seeing a chance of a failed revolution. And if you guys continue this way, I would leave it to you. Because I have other things to do with my life. These are the things I'm talking about. If I were to spend the rest of my life doing just this for these people, my life is fulfilled. If I were to leave this struggle where it is, the little I have done will go into Amazonian history that there was one man who said no. So, those truths are simple. First, basically, I am here today to tell you all sometimes you almost get emotional thinking about these things and what is happening to your people. Sometimes you feel like crying. It's very painful. I am here to make the final wake-up call to Amazonian. This is your final wake-up call. If you fail to heed it, blame yourself for the rest of your life. In the history of every nation, there are men and women who are tasked with the misfortune to always be able to figure out what might happen around the bend. And they always caution others. And the others never do what? They never listen. As we speak, La Republic would wish while I was still in parliament, they could have started something to say, you see, we didn't understand this, you know. No, you are not our slave. We wanted this to be better. If we made a mistake, let's begin the process. They would wish, but it's too late now. The people have risen. Like I told them. And once the first gun was fired, I told them this country is gone. The Cameroon, you know, is finished. There will be a neighboring state to the west of La Republic to Cameroon called Amazon. <laughs> Thank you.
It is your last wake up call to remind you that you have been going down the wrong road for too long. And I have kept reminding you that this is not the road to freedom. Because the road to freedom is rugged. It is cruel. It's daring. It's a devilish road. Whoever is not ready, just remain and be a slave. Don't try. So it's your last wake up call. Please pay attention. The number of people who have changed the history of most countries is never a crowd. It's usually a handful of people. So in the second place, my being here today is to remind you that the goal for total freedom of Amazonia is within your reach. It is there for you to take. I see it very clearly. If you squander your chance, it goes for good. It's a warning. It is there for you. Take it or leave it. Then I'm also here to reassure the international community that Ambazonia is better than the one they have come in contact with on Facebook. Ambazonia is better than that. Ambazonia is better than that. I want to reassure them that we can do better and we will do better and we have the men and women who can commit to the cause of liberation for their nation. We have them. There's no doubt about it. We have them. That reassurance is because, as I said here from the beginning of this conversation, whoever does not believe in Ambazonian freedom don't sit in this room. Do not. That is why when I heard that people were asking for invitations that they wanted to come, some leaders, some people, they wanted an invitation, I was thankful to the German community for saying what? No. We are seeing a vision ahead of us. We are realizing it. When war befalls a country, I come from warrior roots in so. When war befalls a country and the horn for war is blown, every real man just goes to his house and takes down his gun and starts cleaning. You can never knock a warrior from bed and say, what are you still doing in bed? Those are words they use for people they want to take to church or to a political party. You do not invite people to a freedom movement. No. When they see the direction of freedom, they run there. You cannot invite people. You need to say that if you invited this and that, then they will come. What would we do? If you invite somebody, then you start worrying. What is he going to eat? Uh, what does he drink? You now get into those political things that help nobody. And then some will go back complaining that, you know, went to that place where they the whole night hungry. I almost died. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We are here in recognition of the fact that our country, Ambazonia, needs us. And we should be looking at it that way. Now, before I come to an ultimate question that I need to ask all Ambazonians, I will need to remind, especially the elite class of the Ambazonian nation, that they have been too passive. The elite class has been too passive. The discussions are on Facebook and on fora, on uh, WhatsApp. You cannot liberate the country that way. You cannot. Stop those things. Let's begin the process of liberation. If you believe it. If you do not, leave us alone. Who believe in it? We will take it for you. We will go and get the free country for you. We cannot get a free country by screaming and kicking out at everybody, as I've seen. We cannot get a free country by complaining. You cannot get a free country by blaming other people. Oh, the U.S. has not done this. The Germans, you know, they have not said something. The ones, let me tell you. 
Ambazonia, the job of liberation is a DIY. I saw it in England. Do it yourself. If you are waiting for your neighbors, you will drown. So let's stop blaming people. We cannot have a free country through conferences. There's no way. Call a thousand conferences. It cannot take you 10 millimeters towards freedom. I can guarantee you this. Form the 1,000 government. It will never work. The road to freedom is different from all the things we have been trying to do, all the things we have been pretending to be doing. Those are the facts. We've been pretending. We've been self-deceiving. There is an issue there. When I got out here, the whole rush was, oh, honorable, you know, we want to give you an interview. We want you on this. We want to, there is this platform. And I told them, I'm not doing this kind of business. What, what is this about? Those are things that are done by politicians who are hoping to play the next trick and get people doing something for them. I am the guy who does things for people and for my country. And I owe nobody an explanation what I choose to do. I want to ask all of those who were sending me advice from home, oh, come and call for unity. Try so that these people should come together. No matter how hard you try, there's something you need to remember. Politicians do not unite. Never. If you heard that the CPTM agreed with the SDF to do a certain thing, it is to hunt for the head of a liberator. They can only come together when there is what? A threat to their political setup. And that threat is usually someone who says, go to hell with this. The road is the other way. It is people like me. It is people like you who are believers. So my advice is, if we need to take this to the ultimate end, we need to do it differently. Now, I want to explain to you a simple reason why I became the, not the first, the lead person who told us that the formation of something called a government will ruin this struggle. I said it. I was still back at home. More for it is my witness. Because this courageous young man, when the debacle after I got to Nigeria happened, he flew home to come and see me in my village to say, if you do this for us, and I don't come to thank you myself, then I'm deceiving myself. Then I took time to tell him, you see, this is where this thing is going to be going. I'm hearing these echoes about governments and this and that. If you do something called government, once you add the word G-O-V to anything, you have pronounced corruption. You have brought in adventurers. Because a liberation struggle recruits fighters, warriors, brave men and women who can stand and die. Governments recruit administrators, ambitious people, people who want something for themselves, people who want to use the people to get something, not people who want to use themselves to give the people something. That is why I denied it from day one. A lot of people are going to be very disappointed with me. Why? Because they think that freedom is an easy thing. And that is why I have been saying, the reason you choose to be forming governments in the diaspora, and those governments that have ruined our struggle, the reason you choose to do it was because it was the easy thing to do. It was very easy. Call your friends together like we are sitting here. We can sit here like this and go out with 10 governments. Is there something that stops us? Oh, you are already a minister. Call this man, uh, you know, Willie. 
You are the minister of culture. And people clap. It is the easy thing to do. David reminded you people that I said, if you defy science and nature that you can begin building this house from the roof. You are a liar. You are a cheat. You are a fraud. Because houses are built from where? From the foundation up. And I am here today to remind you and to get us to start getting ready to set the foundation for Amazonian freedom. Now, by forming governments, you invite the wrong people. And one of the things that oppression does to a nation is that when the oppressive system, it reduces you to nothing. It deprives you of everything to make you subservient to itself. And when you begin to buy those ideas, you start sometimes behaving like what? Like them. Paul B has been in power for almost 40 years. He has already formed more than 50 governments. Cameroon is only going backwards. Then the people he oppressed, if I'm not mistaken, have you people formed, is it five or six or how many? The struggle is going only backwards. And then you think, because why I denied the concept of government was because you will start imitating your oppressor. And that is the wrong thing to do. You do not imitate the man who is killing you. You do not imitate him. Now, the next reason I denied it was because you are in the Western world. Every government has an opposition. Every government takes money from who? From citizens. So it shocked me that you people in the diaspora are so learned. Your own government takes money and you are saying that it has taken it. You don't know where it went. The one they take from you here, do they come and tell you where they go and spend it? Does the government come to you and say, uh, your tax this year was 100,000. Uh, we put 50 on the road in Boku. We put 25 in this, in... Uh, one of these cities I used to remember very, very well because I love the footballer there. Leipzig? Yes. Because I used to be, no, Leipzig. I used to be a supporter of locomotive Leipzig. Mm -hmm. So, now, if we were to sit down here and be looking only at the cheaper things, those are cheap things. Freedom doesn't come that way. No. That's the reason I was denying it because you will recruit the wrong people. I've been giving this example. When an airplane lands, it taxis to where the passengers drop off. Are we aware of that? When it is about to take off, it taxis to where it will prepare for takeoff. Can it therefore mean that if you were desperate to fly a plane, you look for the best taxi driver in your city? Can the two go? The taxi driver drives a taxi, so he's taxiing it every day. Does it mean he can now taxi a plane and take it off? There are two things that will happen. Either he will be unable to take it off and the passengers will thank God he didn't take off, or he will take you off and then do what? Crash. We need to be realistic in what we are doing. We need to be conscious of the effort we need to put up in order to get what? Freedom. Freedom comes at a price. And sometimes that price is how you think. Following the concept of building the house from the roof. I told you in London that the fighting that has started in the government circles was because the weight of the roof was now coming down on them. And they were trying to dig the foundation with their feet. It doesn't work. 
The only thing you do in that situation is throw it off so that you can breathe free air. Start building the foundation. Without the foundation, it will not work. The basis of every liberation movement, the countries in the Southern African region that I have personally visited some over 20 years ago, just to ask questions, Zambia, South Africa, Namibia, Kenya, people who had fought, you have to learn the things they did and improve on them. Ambazonia cannot reinvent the wheel. It is not possible. We cannot create a new way of doing freedom. It is not possible. Except you have accepted that we are a failed and attempted people who wanted freedom and we are ready to go back and lament and let La Republic walk all over our land and do what they want with us. Or we should get serious, sit up, and begin the liberation struggle in earnest. Before I come to ask you the toughest question that Ambazonians have ever been called to, to respond to, uh, I would like to make one last comment. That my opposition to government was... Partly because I told them that when you form something called a government, all the people internationally who could sympathize with your movement, they run away from you. Why? Because they have diplomatic relations with the oppressor. So if you start by imitating that oppressor, you send away all your friends. So you have nobody who can sympathize with you. You have nobody who can listen to your story. Go around shouting and create governments and do all the things you did until you move in the right corridors and talk to the right people who will listen and say, okay, um, I didn't know this. We need to call the other people to say, this is more serious than we thought. And all of these things are done where? In the back room. In the back room. I've told you about numerous meetings in the commons. I have a whole long list of MPs and members of the House of Lords. I'm sitting with them. You never mention their names. You never talk about it. Because you are winning them to your side of the story. If I were following your drift, as soon as I finished one meeting from two years ago, oh, I was with uh, Minister X, we, you know, we had a drink in the House of Commons and I'm now telling you that very soon Ambazonia will be free. I'm a liar if I tell you that. I'm a liar. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. So we will have to learn discretion. And the last thing that happened when these governmental things are created was I did a bit of psychology as a school teacher and I learned something about group loyalties. They are the most dangerous things you can face, especially in a struggle. Loyalty is a dangerous thing because nobody wants to look stupid. No human being wants to look like an idiot. Therefore, my opposition to the government was when you start and an opposition forms, and if something happens to that government, then we are going to have broken camps and people running in different directions and saying different things. So I advise, don't do it. Because the narrow group mentality is the most dangerous thing. Now, to tell you another truth. For all the people who have formed any kind of group in the diaspora, every government you have formed, I challenge you with this. Do you realize that the loyalty you demand to each group leader, the loyalty you demand to each group is now over and above the loyalty to the Ambazonian flag and the anthem. It's over. So how can you get freedom with that?
how can you get freedom with that? People are now more loyal to their political parties they created on the internet than to the Ambazonian flag and the cause. You are now more loyal to them. Oh no, if you talk against this, you are our enemy. He is the only one. And I swear, oh my God, this is how low we've fallen. We're in the gutter. We are in the gutter. If believers don't rise up from this moment and move in the direction and teach everyone else that it is belief that can free us, I will put you to shame. Because when you will hear that they have cut my head, at least I will rest in peace because I died believing and trying to get a free country for my people. Then the same people paying loyalties to their internet governments and all, they turn around and they are saying, oh, you know, back home, the political parties are not doing this. The CPDM, eh, people are, you know, running after the CPDM because of money. Yours are running after you because of what? How different are you? How different are you? You are just like them. You are just like them. Any person who calls himself a leader and demands loyalty to himself and his group and not to the flag, and not to the star of that destination of freedom, is a liar. He's a cheat. He's a liar. The Ambazonian nation is so big. The project is so huge. It is bigger than all of us put together. How can a little group, how can we have a forest that is Ambazonian? And people create groups and choose a single tree because the tree is very big. They are sitting under and saying, anybody who wants liberation, if they don't enter into this fence around this tree, they would never get there. You are fooling yourself. It's a lie. The hard work of liberation is not done that way. It is not done that way. Have you ever known Ladies and gentlemen, that in human history, you have had men and women who have stood up alone for the truth in their nations. And the whole nation stood up against them. And it ended up that that one woman or that one man was right and the whole nation was wrong. Have you ever known that? I stand with the truth about the liberation of my homeland. If I have to stand there alone, I don't mind. It's my choice. It's my choice. It is my choice. And by the time I make that choice, and two other people come up and say, we make that choice. Ten others come in. We make that choice for freedom. Then, the handful of liberators will free their country for the cowards who choose the easy road. The narrow group mentality is the most dangerous thing we have as we speak. Because I am telling you, I have children, my own. There are no two ways to freedom in any nation. There is only one way. And that one way is that hard way. Either we are ready for it or we give it up. By we. Thank you. By we, I mean you and me who believe. By we, I mean those who can go the extra mile to deliver what they want and to get what they desire. If you do not know something, can't you learn? Why do we go to school? Can't you learn? And I've been asking the question to my brother sitting over there, Dr. Njibamo and Jerima. I've been asking, what has been the use of this huge education we have all acquired abroad? 
that we cannot sit and look at the simple practical things and say, no, this doesn't seem to be working. Let's change it and go to this direction. We have attempted this. And we go around running in circles. Oh, the right government is now this one. Okay, let's agree, according to some of them, that the government was the right vehicle. Now you have five. Which one should we follow? No, to be honest, which one? So we'll now be choosing, uh, okay, the other man is very tall. He looks like my father, so I go with him, right? Where would we end? Where would we end? Now, I would like to, for us to present something to you, which is the major step we need to take towards and what we have been doing to the struggle, which we need to take to start moving in that direction. There are certain truths you need to know. So we'll present them to you. Uh, Dr. Mofo, I would, I would first of all like to have a drink of water and a little breath and a little breath then we do the last okay um thank you so very much honorable thank you thank you thank you um, yes, while um, Honorable is taking a sip of water, we also acknowledge the fact that you've been sitting here for very long. You two need a sip of water and you need maybe some chewables. Um, you will be served something, some finger food. You will also be given some water. Our appeal is that um, you, you saw the images from Abokim, uh, Adagon 1, Adagon 3. You saw the children. We are all here trying to put in money for this project. So we're pleading with you that while you take a drink, I mean, the food is going to be provided for you for free. When you take something to drink, please just drop something, a token so that we can continue to provide for these children. So um, in the hall outside, you will get something to eat. And um, some other thing, some time ago, there was an alarm here. Just to calm you down, that was triggered by some children who entered the uh, lift. So there's nothing to worry about. It was just children playing and everything is fine now. So. Have a sip of water, have a, have a bite, and then we'll come back here very, very quickly and uh, continue with what um, Honorable has to, to present to us. Five minutes, five. All right, 10 minutes. 10 minutes. You have 10 minutes.
Thank you. 
Shalom Please come back inside. Time to come back inside.
Time to come back inside. Time to come back inside. Please come in, let's continue. Hello? Comrades, I'm not sitting here. Comrades, comrades, um, please come back inside. Come back inside. Come back inside. Come back inside. Thank you. Please come back inside. Please come back inside. Thank you. Thank you. And for those who are actually, um, who have not heard this call, please let's get back into the hall. 
Let's get back into the hall. Thank you. Thank you. Let's get back into the hall. Let's get back into the hall. Thank you. Those of you who are still outside, please hurry up so we can proceed. Thank you. Please hurry up so we can proceed. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure we are set. We are now going into the next segment, uh, which will now take us towards the conclusion of what we need to be doing. We have... Yeah, we have a chart here on board, the path to freedom. And uh, we took time to do this analysis so that we help the Amazonian people to know the path to freedom as opposed to the wishful things we are doing and thinking we are on that path. Uh, I have seen, honestly, I am grateful to the efforts I have seen some of us make. I've seen people try. I've seen them use everything they have to try to get towards this destination. I've seen them make the greatest efforts, but there is something missing. No matter how hard you try to hold up walls and hold up a roof, if the foundation is on muddy soil, your house keeps falling down. So I need to point Ambazonia into the direction of the path to freedom. When I was sacked from teaching in the early 90s for joining the SDF revolution and I got a sack, uh, I went into doing different things with my life. I never presumed I would have a time again to stand and start teaching people, talk less, intelligent, wholesome people like you. But now that the opportunity is there, let's begin. <clears throat> As you can see on the screen here, there is a direction in which the earth rotates. It is usually clockwise. This is how it runs. If you can see this, you know that the earth rotates on its axis to the right direction. In the opposite direction, is the direction which is anti-clockwise and that is where the earth should be rotating. By that, what I mean is the efforts we have been putting in this struggle have been pulling exactly in the opposite direction from where freedom is. That's what we have been doing. And that failure has come because we have not taken time to think about what we are facing. When we had the book launch in London, I told the people who, there were many people who came from here, and I told them that I now recognize that you people out in the diaspora do not recognize the enormity of what we are dealing with. You don't even know the oppressor. You don't know that the oppressor never stops killing. You don't know that he stops at nothing to bring you down. Now, we have these red spears pulling downwards. Can you see that? Good. Which means 
the pulling you have been doing or the pushing you have been doing anti-clockwise is taking us backwards. Therefore, if you see those red spears, the 10 governments you have formed are in the spears. All the groupings you are leading, forming these, calling conferences, all of those things are pulling exactly in the opposite direction. The destination of freedom is where you have the star up north. And you can see the effort is going exactly opposite. That is why if we do not turn around, we cannot get there. You can see the other this other no, 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 no. We're back, back, we get back here. You can see these other ones. All right. These are the signs. The people who even began going in the right direction when we started. The political noise in the opposite direction was so much, they were now afraid that if they continued in that direction, they would lose the crowd and they ran back towards the opposite direction. People who want freedom look at this. They look at this direction. And how do we look at that? It is a difficult task. It is tough. The pole is straight and standing upwards, and it is a greasy pole you have to climb out of. That is what we have been doing. And I'm here today to inform you that we need to stop this in order to begin to pull towards that direction where the star of liberty is. That star of freedom is where Ambazonian freedom is. That is why we signify this as the path to freedom. Freedom is never free. That is why I get shocked that people believe that they can do freedom by charity donations. It cannot work. It cannot work. If giving pocket change could free countries, how many free countries would we have? There will be very many. But pocket change doesn't do it. When I give this analogy, a lot of my friends, my brothers, you know, who are, you know, prelates in the priesthood and pastors, they are never very comfortable. But I keep telling them that if charitable donations could help any organization, after 2,000 years of Jesus Christ coming, the church would have stopped. The church would have stopped asking for arms. But they are instead intensifying out a year 2,000. Therefore, if we don't stop doing charitable donations to freedom, we will never be able to climb that pole. It is the do or die. You go for it. You want it. You, you don't wish it. When it is a want, you want to fight to get to that destination. And that is what we need to do. That's why this meeting is a meeting for believers. Have we understood clearly why we have been pulling in the wrong direction? Yes, because these red spears are designed, they are designed to show something. We are trying to use a political vehicle to arrive at a liberation destination and the routes are exactly in opposite directions. They don't go in the same direction. You cannot think that you can be politically very clever. I'm saying this because I did the politics, the rough, crooked, corrupt, terrible politics of life and death in the third world country in La Republic, that you know, for 30 years. It is when I found out that there is nothing in it that will save my people. I said, okay, it's time for me to die. And if there are people who can stand up to die for it, then we start fighting in that direction going north. Can we progress, Dr. Mofo? Now, we have a path here. You can see this chart, which begins from 10%, 20, 30, up to 100. I will be asking the Amazonian nation to listen to me very carefully and try to understand exactly what I'm going to explain to them. Ladies and gentlemen, if we want a free nation, there are things we need to do. All the efforts we have put from 2016 
till this moment have not scratched the surface towards freedom. We have tried very hard, but we haven't scratched the surface. Why am I saying this? I am saying this, ladies and gentlemen, you will take it from me. Ambazonians in the homeland, like those in the diaspora, take this from me. In the school of liberation, in the school of liberation, there is only one pass mark, and that mark is 100%. There is only one pass mark. There are not two. The best people who have graduated from the best universities with the magna cum laude, they don't need to score 100%. 80 would be good. 90 would be good. But we are saying in the school of liberation, there is only one pass mark. And the pass mark is 100%. That's why you are seeing this. Now, for all the efforts we have put on for five years, we have the range for us has been between eight and twelve percent. Eight and twelve percent at the best. And you can look up there and see how much we need to climb out of this hole. That is why I'm saying if we do not change our mindset. If we do not change it, we have defined failure and slavery for the future generations of Ambazonians that La Republic to Cameroon is prepared to kill and dominate for all time. And I am saying, look at this chart. Every single person who talks on behalf of the Ambazonian nation, every person who pretends to lead, Every single person who is forming some group, bringing people together, talking in the name of Ambazonia, look at this chart. Tell me how long and when we are going to climb out to 100%. In the school of liberation, there is only one pass mark. There is no difference in that school between scoring zero and 99.99. It's a fail. The most recent example is the Tamil Tigers in, uh, in Sri Lanka. They got everything on their side. Got an army. Got a navy. Got everything. Went up to 99.9% and came back home with nothing. So, you should know that there's no mark that's good enough. So, I'm addressing this to the people who are talking about liberation forming groups, forming governments, forming all those things, you have not started. If we do not change the mindset and realize that it is until we graduate from the political to the revolutionary that we begin liberation. We are asking them to look at this chart. They should now be holding meetings to find out when and how to take this course to 100%. Anybody who has an issue with the attainment, it is part of what we want to let you know here. Be reminded, in the school of liberation, there is what? No. Only one pass mark. Only. Yes, there's only one pass mark. Can we all rise and do something for this struggle? We are now into the next phase, and I told you about symbols. Symbols are very important in the liberation struggle, and we now need to start acting and behaving like people who need freedom. Are you all from Ambalan? Yes. Do you believe in freedom? Yes. Good. When I say Amba, Amba, your response is, Freedom. Amba, Amba. Freedom. It doesn't sound to me like people who really want to be free. Amba, Amba. Freedom. I hear you. It will be done twice and the third one is Amba, Fire. When you hear Amba, Fire, the response is freedom for Ambazonia. The only goal we fight and die for. 
Freedom for Ambazonia, the only goal we fight and die for. Round one is Amber Amber Freedom, Amber Amber Freedom, Amber Fire. Freedom for Ambazonia, the only goal we fight and die for. Amber Amber. Freedom. Amber Amber. Freedom. Amber Fire. Freedom for Ambazonia, the goal we fight and die for. Are you afraid of death? That's why you cannot remember. Freedom for Ambazonia, the goal we fight and die for. Freedom for Ambazonia is the goal. And I want us to learn that. Freedom for Ambazonia is the goal. When we would begin this, and Willie de Paris and his group of artists have started coming up with the various songs for liberation, when this will start resounding in every prison cell in La Republic du Cameroon and in every center where people are held in bondage and throughout the diaspora, somebody is going to be awake. Some nation is going to hear you. Some nation is going to believe you and will come to your assistance. Amba Amba! Amba Amba! Amba Fire! You don't convince me. Or do I need to translate into German? <laughs> All right. So sit down. Sit down. Let, let's progress. This is a school we are in. We will progress gradually. So as I said, we are in a hole. We need to climb out of that hole. There is a way people who want to climb out of that hole behave. There is a way in which they conduct themselves. And if we are freedom lovers, there is something here we brought for you. There is a heart in the center. There is a question there, how much do I love Ambazonia? Be a believer. Be a patriot. Your patriotism should not be shouting the name of Ambazonia. Your patriotism should be the pain you are ready to go through for the Amazonian freedom. Can we have two, three sharp ladies and gentlemen who can get this to the people and, you know, let everybody have a copy before we progress as we go on. Share it with your brother. You know, you, yes, we can get one from there and go on. Just another one, you know. And you pull, let everybody have a copy. Yeah. Yeah, you just take and send to the person next to you and then we progress from there. Maybe someone should have gone from behind, please, so that we go faster. Yeah. You probably didn't do well. When you hold this, you go around and give people so that we move it faster. You take it up from the... Yeah. So here we are. There are... Yes, there are a whole series of things we need to be doing. There are images we need to be building. There are, you know, words and symbols we need to be building around our revolution, which should be unique, which should be our form of identity, which should be something we stand by. Oh, I do not know. No, we do not have that. So they, they, anyway, they already have the papers. So... Um, have we gone round? Yes, if you have the rest left, please bring them back. Yes. So, now, what you have there is a process of belief. It is a belief system that we need to start creating. And that now brings me to the major segment. You remember the outstanding and the most gracious liberator of South Africa, Desmond Toto, the Archbishop. Archbishop Desmond Toto said something years ago that was very significant to me. One was that as a bishop, he told his fellow South Africans, pray for all you want. You will not get freedom. And he said, I'm a bishop. Pray for all you want. God knows that oppression is fought differently. That is why there are wars to free people in the Bible, in the Quran, in the Torah, in every holy book. There are wars where people fought 
to free themselves from what? From slavery. Pray for all you want. Freedom cannot come because you prayed very hard. If it were that easy, we wouldn't be talking about it. A lot of countries would be free. Then next, he's, he asked South Africans something, which is the most difficult question I'm here today to ask Ambazonians. And that question is simple. Are we Ambazonians? Are you Ambazonians? From the homeland to the diaspora, are you Ambazonians ready to do all it takes to get freedom for your homeland? You, you don't convince me with a yes. yes. You don't convince me. Because people who have the fire, you will hear it and your neighbors will know that uh -huh, something is beginning to happen. Are you ready for this? Yes. Are we ready for freedom? Yes. Are we Ambazonians ready to give all the text to get freedom? Yes. Then there is a process we will have to begin. The next question is, who amongst us sitting here, front, back, and center, can give his leg to be cut for Ambazonia? Who can put his leg to be taken off with an axe to free Ambazonia? I want to see the person stand up. Uh, after the leg, I want to see someone who can put his arm so that his arm is cut to free Amazonia. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Want yours now? This is my brother. This is my brother. I love this guy. I love him. All right. Now sit down. Sit down. We are making a lot of progress. Now, if there are people, because that definition means if you are ready to give your leg, if you are ready to give your arm, you people agreed early in the evening that I put my neck and they didn't take it. If you are ready to give that, how can you come and you want to do a donation? Well, you know, I had 20 pounds. So you guys, you go and manage. Manage freedom? Is that it? If you can give your leg or arm to be cut, then you can give everything you have. When somebody develops a swelling on a toe and tell him that it is cancerous, he puts down 50,000 euro, 80,000. I want it cured. Only your toe. And the whole nation is coming down. And you want to do a chest pocket donation. To free your country, you are a liar. You don't believe in it. When you believe in freedom, you do it all. I just spelled you out how much money I have signed a few books out pleading to people on my knees to feel pity for these our people. And they gave us that amount of money. I can tell you, 125,000 was given by less than 12 people. And only one is Ambazonian. And why did he do it? Because he called me and said, I've looked at the way this struggle has gone. Honorable Weber, what are we going to do? What is it I can do to help you in this process? And I just told him, I wrote a book. Sign one. Give a donation. I wouldn't drink it in a nightclub. It will go to the people who need it Desperately. And he put down 15,000. All right. That is one Amazonian. The person, all the rest are foreigners. They are non Amazonian people. And they listen to a story from one letter from one individual, a native Bushman like me and put down 30,000 and say, if people are in this condition, could 30,000 help? And then we are sitting here, and you hear people talk about, you see, the other time I gave 1,000, you know, I need to know the account. What did they do with my money? We are here to talk about signing a book today to begin the process of raising funds for these projects. 
for the freedom of our homeland. We are discussing it today. And if you want freedom, you pay for it. That's why we began with the arm or the leg. That is why you are taking this home. When you go home, all the other people talking in the name of the Ambazonian struggle, when they get to their homes, I am pleading with them, don't put anything on Facebook yet. Because I know you would be screaming, my government is about to collapse. The first thing you do is digest everything we have said here. Look at this pyramid and find how we can climb out of this hole. Anyone who agrees to that vision, if you want us to talk, those are the men and women I want to be talking to. So when they are blaming me that I don't talk to people, talk about what? I will sit with people and be discussing. You see, uh, I am the person. It should start with me. I should be this. I should be that. You use I should be. I should be. And there is nothing for the Ambazonian people, the suffering people, the dying people, the people who are being exterminated. There is no reference to them. You want me to sit and talk about who, where someone wants to sit. How he is dreaming of power and seeing him or herself as a certain thing in the imaginary country that was stolen 62 years ago. I disagree with you. I cannot do it. I cannot. So, here we are. Before any of them says anything, reflect. I am sure that a lot of people sitting here, if someone had 125,000 of their own. They would already consider themselves rich. Yeah, they have made it. They have made it. My mom is 87. Sometimes I lack what to send her to hospital for controls. Yes. But when you have that amount of money and your desire is mom will go, I will go, the rest will go. Where will we leave the children and the generations we are leaving behind? My desire my effort, my belief is we should leave them a free Ambazonian nation. And if we are to do that, if we are to leave them a free Ambazonian nation, then we should be able to make the sacrifices that count. I am saying this to everybody who is of Ambazonian heritage to reflect on this. And find out the missing link in what we are doing. And if there is somebody here whom, if we sign the book for, and they paid a thousand, ten thousand, then they would go on Facebook and be announcing, uh, We gave this, we want to know where they have kept the account. Please call the credit union and send the money there. It will earn you interest. This struggle will not need it. Because the things we need to do will need billions. And a lot of those things are never mentioned. Not ever. They are never mentioned. You just do them. You just keep going. You just do them. Because if the oppressor has chosen that you either be a slave or I will kill you. And you don't look for a way to take him down. Then what else are you saying? Because if for five years they have continued the killings without any thought of saying no, we actually came into a union with these people. They don't deserve this. They have not found that in five years. And then you think we shouldn't be fighting? We should be standing up to them. And if we have to stand and get from 12% to 100, we have to think differently, act differently, behave differently, and shut our big mouths. And shut our big mouths. Shall we progress? So um, let, let, let me let yes, let me let me guide you. Yes, let me guide you. Uh, so now that we have answered the greatest question ever, the other part is what do you do? There is something here that we send to you at the back of this. Good. There's something we send to you here.
People who believe in freedom, because I've come here so that we start setting the foundation for liberation. And how do you set the foundation? You set the foundation by all of you sitting here, getting back to where you live. Count the number of Ambazonians who believe in this struggle around you. You people start with the formation of a revolutionary committee for liberation. Once you begin with something that is talking about revolution and liberation, you begin to pull in the people who will believe what you and I believe. You begin to bring them together because revolutions and liberation, they are always about the people. Once they are participating, actively participating and taking part in that process, you will get to where you want. That's the foundation I've been crying about. Because we sit out here, somebody makes an announcement, people gather like you do, and they say, now, we have now formed the Ambazonian XYZ. We have now formed the Ambazonian ABC. That is not how it works. Because you are putting the roof before the foundation. Gather your people together by forming these committees. As you see at the back of that. Okay, good. As you can see there, we are already very, very clear here that what you are looking up there, these are the revolutionary committees for liberation. Let's say that each of these circles represent the number of people in each country abroad or even in the homeland. When people form two committees, when people form one, when people form three, all you need is select three people who should be guiding your activities. A chairperson, a treasurer, a secretary. Finish. If you do this in 50 places in Germany, in 200 places in the United States, in 200 places in Asia, you now have the foundation on which you can base what you are talking about. Because these people will be registered members of the Amazonian Revolution. They will be registered members who will tax themselves month by month in order to keep the progress of the movement going. If you do not set this, and you are talking about anything imaginary, it's a dream. You set one, it will break. You set two governments, it becomes three. From the third, you get the fourth. From the fifth, you go to the tenth, and nothing happens. This is where the work is done. And the reason I was saying that people have chosen the easy route is because to do this is a difficult task. I learned it from Namibia. I learned it from the Eritreans. I learned it from the South Africans. Until every church meeting becomes an Ambazonian decision to work on certain things. People leave a church, they gather. They leave a family meeting, they gather. They leave a barrier, they gather. And say, okay, our little... The committee here, we are now planning this. We now want to be putting this together. Now, what is the reason for this? The reason is only one. Raise funds for the liberation of the homeland. That is what every diaspora does to help free their homelands. Raise funds. Once you begin to look for something to administrate, you start lying. You start cheating. You start stealing. You start giving excuses. Why am I saying this? If you set up these revolutions and went, I mean, these revolutionary committees, and we began, five, five people, ten, ten people, before you know, we will be saying that we now have 20 in Germany. We now have 30 in this state in America. We now have 10 here. And if those 10 have only 10, 10 believers, and those believers are putting something on the side for the liberation of their homeland. When the time comes for us to be beginning the real work, I am saying this so that you learn. Liberators fear money. Because money is a terrible evil and a temptation. They fear it. Liberations fear noise. Because noise is very destructive and destructive at the same time. So why I'm saying this is because once you set that up and people begin to build those little, little committees, 
and then you put, you can put together, you can see the, the yellow lines are the, the, the officers of every committee in every area. All right. If we now have four in a country, say Austria, then we now elect three people who handle that. Okay? Because those three people are just there to make sure, do we have an account? Where is it going to? We are putting it together. We want to be able to have this by this time. By the time there is something, the movement of the people of Ambazonia wants to do something. The reference is a phone call. What does Austria have? What does Belgium have? We can now do X, X, Y, Z in the next three months because of what we have. And that can be a sustainable method. Because people who do that from the countries I have been to, to learn how these things are done, if it is not us coming in to gather those things, we will keep doing these things we are doing here. So, the people who are fighting, talking about power, talking about who is legitimate, who is not, who, is, who has the power, who should be the controller, who should be the whatever, you are discussing the wrong subject. The actual thing should be, where are the Amazonian people putting their efforts to liberate their homeland? And then the rest of it, we will be explaining it in the progress of time so that you can fully understand what we need to do to go to where we want to be. Now, Yes. So the next step is in this progression, the next step is we will now show Ambazonia that if you are ready for your freedom, this is what we are doing. We have given three basic numbers there. Those basic numbers represent certain areas, Africa and the Middle East. There is one number where people who have formed their committee can send information about the formation. Those in Africa. We'll be adding other numbers as we progress. In the Americas, there is one number. You only send the information. We now have four. We now have ten. We now have five. The five now constitute 25 people. The five now constitute 50 people. When we are beginning progressively to build that, that is the foundation on which every known liberation struggle has stood. It is organizing the people. It is bringing them together, not their leaders. It is bringing the people together because this is about the people. The final decision as to where we will end will be the people's decision. And if the Amazonian people choose and we begin this progression, Europe and Asia, we are going to this. We are now putting this. We have five. We have ten. Before long, you will not believe what we will be able to show that we have done. This is the road we came out here. I've come out here to point to you that since the road is going up to the North Pole and we are dragging the revolution down to the South Pole, it is time to turn around. And that turnaround cannot be easy because it is going to mean that something you now believe in that will free you, you were sitting in the wrong vehicle. You now need to come down from it and start trekking. The hard work, the trekking, the broken bones, the blood, the sweat, the actual pain of emptying your accounts to say, we want a free country, this is where you will stand to be counted. When we would have done that, and all of us, as you want to ask, are we Ambazonians ready to do all it takes to liberate our homeland? Yeah. Are we ready to liberate our homeland? Yeah. All right. I will challenge you. You will learn how to sing freedom. Immediately you do that, you will be able to convince me. There is sing freedom at the end of this. And uh, you can look at the words. Uh, uh, if you are to sing better and to raise your voices so that the rest of Ambaland should hear, you should be on your feet. The words are very simple. Ambazonia, let's fight for freedom. Or oh, Ambazonia, 
fight for your homeland. The chorus is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wake up, wake up, Amazonia. Let's liberate our homeland. Are we ready? Are we ready? Yes. Can we be on our feet? Because we need to tell the world that we are ready for this. In the nature of symbols, this is one of the symbols we are going to hang on to. Um, can we have three ladies and three gentlemen, people who are used to singing, so that they can help the others give us the, the right tone? Just three, just donate yourself. Don't, don't begin to wait. Just come along. Just come along. This is how it works. This is how it works. Will he come? Can you be standing the Namasa? Come. Ah, uh, ah, uh, we're talking about people who can sing. You shouldn't be looking. People should just be coming. You see what I tell you? Yeah. You guys can see what I've been telling you. Already, even just to stand here and do a contribution that way, somebody is already feeling inconvenience. You know, it is too much to leave my seat and go there. Yes. Yes. Come on. <laughs> yes. We need, we need somebody else. All right. Now, now I want you to help me. Can you, uh, Elino, please, ma'am? Yes. Join this group. I am just going to tune it for you. And it is simple. Let me run through it. And then Elino can give it to you and the rest of us can join. Ambazonia, let's fight for freedom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wake up, wake up. Ambazonia, let's liberate our homeland. Wake up, wake up, Ambazonia, let's liberate our homeland. So, you tune it. Ambazonia, let's fight for freedom. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So, can we go? Ambazonia, let's fight for freedom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Are we agreed on that? Ambazonia, let's fight for freedom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wake up, wake up, Ambazonia. Let's liberate our homeland. Wake up, wake up, Ambazonia. Homeland. Wake up, Ambazonia. Let's liberate our homeland. Let's fight for freedom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wake up, wake up, Ambazonia. Let's liberate our homeland. Ambazonia, let's free. In the homeland, yeah, 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 yeah. Wake up, wake up, Ambazonia. Let's liberate our homeland, Ambazonia. Let's fight for freedom, yeah, 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 yeah. Wake up, wake up, Ambazonia. Let's liberate our homeland, Ambazonia. Let's fight for freedom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wake up, wake up, Ambazonia. Let's liberate our homeland. Ambazonia, let's march to freedom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wake up, wake up, Ambazonia. Let's liberate our homeland. Ambazonia, let's fight for the homeland. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wake up, wake up, Ambazonia, let's liberate our homeland. Ambazonia, let's free the homeland. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wake up, wake up, Ambazonia, let's liberate our homeland. Ambazonia, freedom is the goal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wake up, wake up, Ambazonia, let's liberate our homeland. Ambazonia, let's fight for freedom. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Wake up, wake up, Ambazonia, let's liberate our homeland. Ambazonia, let's go for freedom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wake up, wake up, Ambazonia, let's liberate our homeland. Ambazonia, go free the homeland. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wake up, wake up, Ambazonia, let's liberate our homeland. Ambazonia, let's free the homeland. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wake up, wake up, Ambazonia, let's liberate our homeland. Ambazonia, let's go for freedom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wake up, wake up, Ambazonia, let's liberate. Our homeland, Ambazonia, let's free the homeland. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wake, wake up, wake up, Ambazonia, let's liberate our homeland. Ambazonia, go take your freedom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wake up, wake up, Ambazonia, let's liberate our homeland. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ambazonia, let's fight for freedom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wake up, wake up, Ambazonia. Let's liberate our homeland. Amen. Now we are there. That is what it means. This is what I mean by asking you, create your national symbols. When we will begin the stomping and the marching around the world, when we will begin it in the homeland, I can guarantee you La Republic should spend the next budget for two years building new prisons because the eight million of us are going to choose to be prisoners. The eight million of us are going to choose to stand up and fight for freedom. Get ready. Get ready. Set the foundation for your freedom movement. Set the foundation. If all the leaders who have been talking out in the diaspora and elsewhere know what they are looking for, they should now know the setting of the foundation is more important than fighting over the roof. When the foundation is set and the walls are built, we will have a free country to live in. We will have a free country to live to our children. We will have a free country that we can be proud of. Amba, Amba! Freedom. You already forgot. Freedom. You already forgot. Amba, Amba! Freedom. Amba, Amba! Freedom. Amba, fire! Freedom. Freedom for Ambazonia, the goal we fight and die for. Freedom for Ambazonia, the goal we fight and die for. That is the commitment. That is the word. I thank you very, very much. I love Ambazonia. I give my heart to you. I love you. Thank you very much. Amazonia has liberated our homeland. So, thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Honorable Weber. There is one thing we need to do to finalize this before we get to the next item on the agenda. We have to start the work of establishing revolutionary committees now. Today, it will, not, it will not be an event where we come and sit and listen and listen and go back as we have been doing for five or six years. He has said that we have to start doing things differently because we cannot keep on doing the same things and expecting better results or different results. So we want to make it shorter than we had anticipated because time is gone. 
And so what we will do is we would simply identify people who have come from a certain area, country or region, and then we will give them, we will give them one of these sheets, one, just one of these small sheets. When you take it, you will see the information on it. There is going to be a meeting tomorrow at 10 a.m. And in that meeting with Honorable Weber, we are going to discuss closely. Uh, so what I will, will be doing now is just let me know, for example, if you have come from Holland, Belgium, France, France, there are many people from France here. Even if those who have come from Paris or Strasbourg, you can take one more paper, there's no problem. Yes, Strasbourg, more from Paris. Okay. Those who have come from Germany, for example, from non rhine westphalen they can take one also. Where are they? Not Rhine, that's Comide. But in Wittenberg, Bayern or Bavaria. Is there any other state represented? Saxon? Okay. Berlin. Hey, bro, I didn't see you. <laughs> UK. Finland. Where is Finland? That is uh, Commonwealth Secord. No, it's Finland. Uh, UK, you take one. Is there someone from another country or region that we have not mentioned? Sorry? US, of course, definitely. Canada. Oh, where's my comrade? Yes, I remember. That's my man. Holland, you have already. They, are not, no, they already have. So let's, let us leave it there. Now, please, the assignment you have, the first thing is that we are going to meet tomorrow at 10 a.m. It is not going to be a long meeting. That is the first thing. Switzerland. Oh, I, I didn't take this one. Yeah, they are 100%, but I didn't. Uh, I said, I asked now. These are our people, yes. So, please, um, if I still have enough, if you, if there is someone for a, from a region or a country and you need one, just let us know. The meeting will be tomorrow at 10 a.m., mark the time, and the address is on that sheet that you have. When, from now to tomorrow, the question that you would be answering or you should be discussing Mark it, you may write it down. I just wrote it down on a piece of paper. After, you may even record it. After sharing this vision for our freedom with us, what do you think you people should be doing from now so that we get these committees put together quickly for liberation work to begin? That is the question we are going to discuss tomorrow with Honorable Weber at 10 a.m. So when you are coming tomorrow, please get have answers to those questions which are discussed together, and then from there, we'll move to the next things. Then, okay, the question again. After sharing this vision for our freedom with us, what do you think you people, that means you in your committee, you in your own region, or you in your own country where you are coming from, our Amber community there, what do you think you people should be doing from now on so that we get these committees, that means these revolutionary committees 
put together quickly for liberation work to start. We have said that we have lost so much time and now we have to go faster. That is the question that you have to ask yourselves in your own region and in your own area or country. And tomorrow morning, we shall be carrying out that discussion. It's going to be a smaller group. And so we expect to be uh, very open in our discussion. So that is the task for tomorrow. You have the address of uh, the meeting venue. The time is 10 a.m. and we'll be, we'll be there tomorrow. The next thing is, where is Comrade Sikot? Yes, that's my comrade from Finland. Those of you who would want to have one-on-one -on -one with Honorable Weber, one-on-one -on -one discussion, there is going to be time for that tomorrow after this meeting. We expect this meeting to last for maximum two hours. One and a half hours is planned, maximum two. And after that, that means latest from 12 noon, those who would like to have one-on-one -on -one discussions with Honorable Weber can have the chance to talk to him directly. And if you would like to be one of them, give your name to Comrade Sikot today. Meet him anytime. You can see him very well. Meet him anytime and give your name to him. He is going to put up the list and give your number to him also. He's going to indicate what time you can come to um, have the discussion and he will tell you where it's going to take place. Are we together? Yes. Are we together? We yes. want to do it very orderly. So that said, take the assignment seriously. Let us take the time tomorrow to discuss about our revolution and our future and the future of our children and grandchildren. Uh, I will now call, I think my, our MC is getting tired. I know it's tough job. Revolutionary work is tough job. So uh, senior comrade, you can take over. All right. Okay, um, thank you so much, Dr. Mufo. Um, amazing presentation, right? Okay, um, for us to have some relaxation, we'd like to ask Mr. Julius Abam to come to the stage. Where is he? He's supposed to be, please, we need you here. Please, please. Um, while we ask Shiva Saba as well to start preparing to come to the stage and why they are coming, we would like to appreciate the work of the SCBC. <laughs> They've been doing an amazing job. That's why people are able to watch us worldwide. That is because of the SCBC. And of course, um, all the other channels that are here. We appreciate you. Um, Mr. Julius Abu, the floor is yours. DJ. Okay, our DJ is working hard on it. Mr. Julius Abu. Thank you so much. Uh that will be homeless in my homeland. But before I do that, um, good evening to everyone. Thank you so much, Hon Honorable Weaver. Uh, I do appreciate. And uh, I would like to say this free, uh, sing freedom, it's the uh, lyrics, I really, really like them. I would like to sing something else, if you permit. Ambazonia, let's fight for our freedom. Ambazonia, fight for your homeland. Chorus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wake up. Wake up. Ambazonia. 
Ambazonia, let's liberate our homeland. Let's take just that last part. Ambazonia, let's liberate our homeland. Is it okay? Okay, we go with the clap. Ambazonia, let's liberate our homeland. Ambazonia, let's liberate our homeland. Continue. Let's liberate our homeland. Ambazonia, let's liberate our homeland. Continue. Ambazonia, let's fight for your freedom. Ambazonia, let's fight for your homeland. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Wake up, wake up, let's liberate our homeland. Ambazonia, let's liberate our homeland. Homeless in my homeland. It started like a joke and I smiled. From Meme to Momo, we said no violence. Now I know not how to smile, cause my loved ones are gone. There is no place to call home. Our homes have been burnt. I am homeless in my homeland. You have it. It started like a joke and I smiled. From Meme to Momo, we said no violence. Now I know not how to smile, cause my loved ones are gone. There is no place to call home. Our homes have been burned. I am homeless in my homeland. There is no place to call my home. Homeless. Homeless, I am homeless in my homeland. When are we going to have a dialogue? We have buried more than enough. Nothing heals the past like time. When are we going to have a dialogue? We've been marginalized enough. You may fool some people sometimes, but you can't fool them all the times. Let's go. Homeless. Oh yeah, homeless. I am homeless in my homeland. One more time. Homeless. Ah, ah, ah. Homeless. I am homeless in my homeland. Now it comes to the difference. Some people think superior or inferior. The difference between people is opportunity. You are not there because you are great. You are there by his grace. Do not treat others like second class people. If you close your eyes to facts, you learn through mistakes. When are we going to have a dialogue? We've been marginalized enough. Nothing heals the past like time. When are we going to have a dialogue? We've been marginalized enough. You may fool some people sometimes, but you can't fool them all the time. Let's go. Homeless. Ah, ah, ah. Homeless. I am homeless in my homeland. Thank you. Homeless. Let's go. Homeless. I am homeless in my home. Why am I homeless? Homeless. Homeless. I am homeless in my homeland. Homeless, homeless, I am homeless in my homeland. DJ, let's go with Anna Capella. Homeless, homeless, 
I am homeless in my homeland. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. I have a lot of money. I'm a rich guy now. Thank you so much for the money. I really, really appreciate. But what I usually do is this money, I don't take it home. We have people on the ground who have nothing to eat. And uh, we've eaten something and we've drunk something. So I give it to support those on the ground. I don't know who is taking it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. He's giving it to the people on the ground. Wow. Thank you. Okay. Um, we will get to the next stage. Everybody who is outside, please come inside because we are getting into real, real business. Um, we need Chiva Saba on stage. We need... Everybody who is outside, please, can you come in? No. And Chiva Saba. Um, DJ, while we wait for Chiva Saba, do you want to, to remind us of what we heard from the beginning? Maybe what Honorable said. Just give us something. So, uh, we have had, uh, we've heard the words from uh, Honorable Weber. And uh, yes, I think uh, uh, the time has come for us to turn the page, you know, and, uh, and move on like revolutionaries. But before we go to that, uh, I would like to, uh, to acknowledge the presence of uh, of, of scarf in the house. Mark Barretta and the scarf, please. I would like you to come forward. Mark Barretta and scarf. I just want to appreciate your, that you came in here. Please, you know, you bring your colleagues here. I don't know who they are, but Mark, uh, come over, please. You come over, you come over. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, uh, where's Don Pasho? Where's my, who's that my, my picking Don Pasho? Don't go no. <laughs> when I go need tea, then you know, he, he, he's nowhere to be found. But anyway, why Don Pasho is coming, uh, it, 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 as SCA Germany, uh, uh, just a representative here, to, to acknowledge the presence of SCARF. Uh, we had the uh, SCA Germany did not invite anybody. So, but when we saw you here, we'd like you to, to, to acknowledge. Yeah, sorry, I, I, I'm not a journalist. I don't know that the cameras are behind me. I am sorry, I'm very sorry that they were only seeing my back, but I will not lose so many words. I will give 
the word to you, Mark, and then you can then say some what you've heard, your impression of the evening, and then we'll just move forward to the next agenda. Uh, my brother, thank you very much. I go talk for pigeon because I know say our people them back home, them the uh, watch everything way it, it, it go on now inside uh, Stuttgart, uh, Germany. I think say the coming out of uh, our papa uh, Honorable Weber, not a very good thing for us, and it will help for rekindle our spirit towards uh, which way we need to do for liberate homeland. I think say all of us who come here for take forward uh, the way forward we uh, we don't give us the vision. And one thing where I don't think I'm, for me will be very important for this uh, uh, gathering. I say we need a symbol. You know that thing where it is. In the gather us. I think if we don't watch liberation movies them um, from South Africa, you know, those symbols them, um, it help us as we come out church, you come out to any jangi room, those songs the way you sing them, those like Amazonia, freedom, all those things like this, it, those are things that they bond us uh, to together. Uh, uh, so as we go back to our various uh, communities and we create those small, small revolutionary committee, you know, don't bother if it's he, if he big or it's small. Uh, crowd, crowd, no matter. We like how we uh, on the Ruba talk. We need believers in the Amazonian dream. And I say and say for the five years we don't we don't be now. People they don't fall. People they don't quiet. So people, some people are still standing up. So I appreciate the fact say we we day uh, this day for yet we uh, uh, honorable don't you don't talk. Um, so I day with me with the uh, members of 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 staff. I I, I be surprised say you you, you, you even even. And English us in, in, in this way because that is the, the, the when you start English us, we start to feel important, but we, we just <laughs> we start to feel too much, too much important, you know. And the, the idea going going forward, I say, all of us will we get up on ground level, we don't need that, uh, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman, Mr. This, so that wouldn't help us anymore going uh, going uh, going going forward. So, but uh, I just thank you very much for. Uh, we will be sounding the most activists from SCAF and activists. All of us, by nature, we are all activists of of the revolution. So, please, as we don't come in now, so going forward, make we uh, go a- ahead. And me too, I will try my own way. I don't think again on Facebook. I hope so. All I want to know because I don't get so many information from people in the camp. Say, Mark, you don't talk, you don't talk this. There is a thing on Facebook called Barita News Exclusive. That's not me. That is done by Padia Sanga. We did for for you know, Germany. You will not see when I want to beat them. <laughs> and one other guy was for, for UK. That is Cameroon government is, is doing it. So now I'm on live talking. You don't publish so many terrible things that you don't break on our spirit. Many people are running mad. You don't talk this. You don't say this. It's not me. I just my from my little corner. I did, I did do my own thing quiet only on Twitter. But when you try to take action for stop that Facebook page, you don't cause so many damage said so many things. And these are people when they get intel inside Cameroon government, we see what they are, they are doing. They, they come up with the first pictures of things that happen, no say, now Cameroon government, it, it, it do them. So when I help you for report that page, you know, for, for block them, for report them, if you get any connection, help for, for bringing them because they do a lot against our revolution. I'm only on Twitter. I'm not yet on Facebook. But the Canal Live on SCAF Facebook page. And I go come live more often for uh, talk more on which way uh, but we don't talk about this revolutionary committee. So thanks very much. I'm gonna enjoy the evening. Okay, uh I thank Una plenty and no wanna uh, I want to give this message to those who are viewing us on television and those who are watching us also through the Zoom link. There are questions that have been sent. We are not um, rejecting your questions. We acknowledge that we have seen the questions, uh, but these questions will be discussed tomorrow when we meet in the morning. So we will not discuss the questions today. That's just for information for those who have asked questions. Yes, we have seen the questions. We will will discuss them tomorrow. Thank you. Okay, on that, uh the information was already written on the chat to those who raised their hands and wanted to ask questions. We actually said that questions that people will not ask questions in this forum. 
and that our guest is not going to happen. It's not that we, I mean, he invited people to come here and he has spoken. And I think that uh, that should be that for now. Uh, and those questions that are on, uh, that were on, uh, on the chat and that have been posted, as Dr. Mufab just said, uh, they have been, we, we've taken them into, they would be answered tomorrow. So everything is taken into consideration. But let us go to the next thing. You know, I, I've, I've listened very attentively and uh, I've seen the program and we have to raise some money because I was personally, uh, I, I did uh, attend the book launch. I did attend the book launch on the 12th of January. I did attend the book launch and, uh, you know, we talk about revolution. We talk about revolution. We have, you know, I, I would prefer not to talk about Honorable Weber, but to talk about that book. Because it is the, 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 the content of that book that we're going to use. To, because I've listened to it. And uh, I want each and every one of us in here to begin that revolutionary mindset. Because when I listened to that, I said, okay, if he can raise, if he could, people could raise, I mean, through that book, 125,000. I just want you to join me here so that we begin a journey to raise another 125,000. So that is just exactly what I'm out here to do. I mean, I, I'm not exaggerating, but I am, I, I, I think, I know we'll make it. And uh, so we have the book here. So I would be, I would like to call uh, the books to come here, please. Yes, bring in the books. And uh, I will need Celestine, Ma Celestine Dinger here with me. Ma Celeste, please come over. We have those books here, and we want to let we we'll let the books go. And uh, I want to present you, Ma Celestine, will be assisting me for the fundraising. And uh, I will call it the fundraising. I really call it the fundraising in this form because we know I want to use this book beginning to right here so that we get and uh, I accept, I accept cash, which is the best thing. We are in Germany. They say in Germany that Noa Bares is Bares. No, you know, I mean, the German man understand what they say. Noa Bares is Bares. But then that is not limited to that. If you have a credit card or whatever, we have it. Ma Justine come over. She is sitting here. So I've also acquired this, taking into consideration that uh, we are living in a world where people don't use travel with money. We have gone through a pandemic, and so people are also used to just traveling with some plastic thing in their pocket, you know. So we will use that today. So you hold all those plastic. You take out the credit cards, right? I want to see those things right now. But before we begin, I would want to ask a question here. How many people inside here? How many people have read the book written by Honorable Weber? How many have read this book? Okay, there's quite a number, but I think all the others who have not read the book, you'll read it tonight. <laughs> you have to read it. Because, I mean, it, in a revolution, you know, Ambazonians, they would prefer to talk about Che Guevara, which is also very good, right? But we want to talk about our own 
revolutionary people who have written books. This is one. This is the only book about the Ambazonian revolution that I know. If you know any, please tell me. Is there any? Okay, but then we are out here for this one. So I would like to begin. And I would like to say that the books have been signed. All these books have been signed by Honorable Weber. So I would just I'd like to acknowledge also the, I would, I would just like to call some few people here who I think have seen them in the hall. And I would just like to call, I, that is how I begin. You just come in here. We don't have to do it publicly and say I've given whatsoever we might either say if you want it or you just come over here remember you received this book right you everybody in sitting in here will have to leave this hall with this book in his even those who have read that book you will give it to your to your nephew because i had so many of them in my house but when my nephews and dad, when they came around, I told them, look, listen, you cannot go away without having this. And they all took it. So I myself, I will need one. I don't have any. So, but so I will start by recognizing the presence of, uh, I mean, I met him in Switzerland. Mr. Martin Gong, where are you? Please come here, my, my brother. Please, please. <laughs> DJ, that is a uh, Mr. Martin Gong from Switzerland. Yes, I have the honor. So, this is you are the first person I want you to to get a copy, and then you turn to the camera. I have a copy of this already. It's about a year ago that I had it. So this should be the second one. Okay. You see? He has already a copy. He has already a copy. So just go over discreetly. That is what I would do. As I say, the books have been signed. You will just go over discreetly to Majesty Bang, who is out there. If she's having whatever you have you take it. If you have a, a credit card, you register it. If you have bars, you, if you have, I mean, cash, give it to Yeah! Mr. Martin Gong! Normally, I've just received uh, a hint. You know, fundraising is something that uh, it has its own dynamism, you know. But they want to know if what this book is normally cost. For me, if you go off the shelf to buy it, you will buy it for 20 pounds, 25. Minimum. But being a revolutionary book, it hasn't got any price. For me, this book is priceless. For me, this book hasn't got a price tag. And, you know, as, yeah, 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 yeah. So the problem is this. I'm saying that as the honorable our guests 
uh, of honor just said, he said, a revolution is either you get it or you screw it all up, right? So, there is not something in a revolution like 99 point, uh, you know. So, it is equally like this book. I can tell you it is 25. I can tell you it's 50. I can say it is 100. I can tell you it is 1,000. It is a revolutionary book. Normally, it has a price tag. I will just want to call you that this money is going to the project. So, I know that when we say the price, as I said it before, you should know that it is not going to anybody, but it is for the revolution. So we want to make, to hurry up with this. So I would like to get Eric Muji, please. Mr. Eric Muji, where are you? He's not. Call Eric. All everyone to come in here because I have all your names on my list. <laughs> yes. I have your names. Eric Muji. Where are you? Weber Force is here. So this is the person I've been wanting to hear. His name is, your name is? Tam Polycap Weber Force. So, you go over there. Normally, yes. You Have, have you got the book? That's my name. I'm getting the book. For the second time, but we need a fundraiser because it is to pay the book the price over there. I mean, a fundraising. You go over there to if you have a credit card, please. Yeah, 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 I know. So now I, I see that. Uh, Actually, I've been I've been corrected that one at least one of these books the price is fifty euros. I had thought that people would not. Uh, I mean, when I say twenty twenty five, they double it. They just giving the exact price, and uh, that is why I think that if everyone in here just come in here and buy the book for fifty euro or anything, that would be a simple thing that we would do. But I had expected some heavy weight lifters in here, please. So I have expected from Eric from Holland. Eric Moji, where is he? Because he is, I called him because he promised me when we were in Berlin that we were doing a fundraising in Munich and he put up, I think, 200 euros or one ever and saying that that was the foundation for us Ambazonian to build the Ambazonian embassy in Deutschland. So Eric, my friend, where are you? You are, you, you're not here. Okay. So I will get to the, I need you here, please. Come and get the copy, the next copy. Hey, DJ. Oh, oh sorry, sorry. No, I, I, I'm very honored to own a copy of the book. Thank you very much. Do you have a copy already? I don't have one. So, you go over to... to yes. Yeah. I will pay you my yes. Will you pay... Sorry. So... No virus is virus. My colleague... Uh, who is the next person, please? Because I don't have your names. I have a few names on my list. But all of you, when it comes to fundraising, people leave the floor. So, Willie and Don Pasho, I want everyone to come here, come forward, and go get this book. The book I have, it for, I have the book already, but I'm giving it as a present to somebody. Okay. And uh, I would like to give it to the young Ambazonian. This is your history. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Nine. Nine. Okay.
Okay. So, by Emmanuel Boga, you did the wonderful thing. Is not you, how old are you? Be at best to twelve. A young revolution. Stand up. Twelve years. Raise the book up. Let's see. Show the book. Oh yeah. Twelve years old. So. A secret. I've not seen you here, my friend Johnson. Secret Johnson, I need you here. Come and get your own copy of the book. Anybody who wants to get, I am giving this book now. I, I, I have a copy already. I'm getting okay. it for, for my friend. For a friend? Yeah, I'm getting it for a friend. So, what is your name? My name is Tama. Your name? Kebe. Tama Kebe. Tama Kebe. Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from Stuttgart. From Stuttgart. Yeah. Okay. Oh, he's from the son of the soil. So he's from Stuttgart, the first one here. Go over there. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's go. Uh, all the Stuttgart affairs, you come and get your copy. Those from Stuttgart who have not gotten any copy, you come forward and get a copy. Miami, please. <laughs> I want you to come and give me the money. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You are from? I'm from Strasbourg. You are from? From Strasbourg, France. I'm from Strasbourg. Okay, from okay, from France. Yes. So you came over here to? Yes. Okay. okay. Do you have a copy already? My first time to have the copy. I'm very very happy. Just say something. <laughs> I cannot, I cannot express my joy for the outing of our Honorable. Only his present year tells me freedom. If they are asking people who can put their leg there, that they should cut it. If you ask from the Strasbourg people, they will tell you I am one. And in my mind, I have nothing less than freedom for Ambazonia. As I'm standing here, it is neither life or freedom. That's my name for Ambazonian. Thank you all. Yes. Now, so, DJ, 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 leave us. So. We know the year now for dance. The talks on talks say we'll come here now for freedom. We all know that song with that beginning, the singer for dance. Now, my brother, them, now my sister, them, now my age group. If this generation finish, then we will not get again another generation. If I happen to die in the battlefield, never worry, we shall meet. Ya own die na di book. Ya own die na di book. Now that boy for dang day, be ready for die. Wait to you, you get forgiven. Give we move give them for dang day. Now it is. If you should don't for your way, you know, get we back force. That means say, you don't know this song where I don't sing and so. So may any man wake up for up, can't take your own we back force go down. Because we'll get forget that political education. Where many of us will not get a leg. We pa honorable, we baron talk for his house here. We don't forget about that flag. Would they look now ourselves? Would they look now say one crown some person? We know the crown nobody for inside Amber land. We need freedom. And for that freedom, for come, make we sacrifice. We for diaspora, we will not get nothing for sacrifice apart of our own finances. Ground zero, did he die? Now they book this. They will buy for us. Who need the own? Me who can take them. Thank you very much, Mama. Thank you very much, Mama. Thank you very much, Mama. Two copies. Two copies. Two copies. Two copies. When I clap for bus, we buy two one time. If 
two puppies. Share them up. Buy your Weber force. Buy your Weber force. Thank you very much. Buy your Weber force. If I happen to die in the battlefield, don't you worry, we shall meet again. For diaspora, we know this. We know the year gone. As we talk now, so the day for battle. As we talk now, so the day for battlefield. Make we take our Weber force, take and go. Any man where he need for say, make we get freedom. Now the Weber force this is therefore we front. Weber force, therefore we front. Make we take and we don't hear. Plenty of we not be believe say, Papa, be she don't quiet. But if he do something, we'll be sorry. Please come we forward. Say we we'll call you, say Papa. You don't talk say no be you tied to, but we'll be sorry. If he come, May up, come up take time. But you we'll come in and get the book. We'll you go. come in and get the book. The book is here. Thank you, bro. Go, go, go. Thank go you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You Any come and man, get the book. People. Pastor Babek, chief, call with that people they for as I said. Uh, them. Them. Go, can't, can't call them. Go, go and call them. Would you hold microphone? They will go and call them. May they come inside. Would you arrest any man? I don't say I don't hold microphone. 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 You come in here. Please. We have a copy here. Who hasn't got it? You stand the line. You don't read the book. Okay. And number two. You see? He has got a second copy for a friend. You know? Number two. The books are here. Oh, yeah. You come and get your copy.